Just take me up. It's day two of ICONS 2022. We're coming to you live from the SunTech Convention Center in Singapore. Hello, everyone. It's your boy, Digon, And joining me at the Metaphorical Analyst desk today are Omo and It's Stewart. We've got the Southeast Asian representation. We've got ourselves a European representation. It's going to be a lot of fun today. Omo, how's it going, man? 
I'm excited to watch the games here today. I think it's going to be a good one. I think it's going to be better than yesterday. But the trend I think we're going to continue to see is Eastern domination. How about you, Stuart? Yeah, I mean, I'm keeping my EU hopium dreams alive. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> it didn't go the way of Rick's yesterday. But we got another chance today. I don't believe it. They, they haven't even played yet, man. You, you've, got, you've, got, you've got it. You've got it. You've got it. <laughs> All right. 24 of the best Wild Rift teams from around the world are competing in person because lands, they hit different. And right now, at we're at the play-in stage. Our first eight teams competed yesterday. Let's take a look at what your biggest takeaways were from day number one. Stuart, let's start with you. Yeah, yesterday was uh, about all the sweeps, really, to be fair. Every single game was 2-0. and We didn't get a 2-1 at all yesterday. So if the teams are watching, if the teams are listening, let's try and get some closer games. I want to see at least 1-2-1 one, one today. You know, you, know, you know, to be fair, though, the, the EU game, Ricks and T1, there, <laughs> it was close, right? Ricks had themselves a 4K lead until it kind of evaporated. I think both games, they had a gold lead. Yeah. And then it just, like, just completely went at the last fight every single time. But... All two O's. Good, good learning lessons. Good learning yeah, lessons. Sure. All right, uh, Omo, how about you? Well, yesterday was really no surprise to me. I got every prediction correct, and I think that's a trend <laughs> that we're going to continue to see. It wasn't really hard to predict. Let's see if today, you know, there we go. That's there the that's is. the that we're looking at. Twitter.com, Omo2 underscore 2, if you want to know who's going to win <laughs> the games ahead of time. Omo, there's there's two other. Omo, you should be Omo number one because you got all of them right. I know, I think we so. We need I'll the time for that, that too. <laughs> I promise. He tweeted it out before the game started for me i think the biggest surprise was how dominant wrl in the form of team and uh adg uh we didn't know what to expect with jt moving on in but uh they look very very good and so i think a lot of teams have uh have to be aware of the wrl squads and the other thing that was so great from yesterday the rq celebration let's take a look at the philippine team for the wcs their pop off they were excited to win one of the best storylines we follow all tournament long Exosin, a pro from League PC who made it to the world stage with Mineski all the way back in 2013, getting his first win on the global stage with RRU nine years later, Hero. It's such a brilliant storyline for this team. And I think look at RRU as well. This is so fun to watch inside the game, outside the game. You just got to love them. That's right. Uh, and you know who definitely loves them? Uh, fellow <laughs> Filipino fans, there is one of us here on the broadcast team that was very excited couldn't contain her incitement as well take a look at that riku dancing <laughs> it up there with hell's devil she was feeling exactly what rq did again representation for wc love the dad energy from kang <laughs> yeah, who's got the better EU move here Stuart? we're gonna have to oh, try to a little bit. we might have to keep that off broadcast okay. i'm not too sure about it oh, well, be shit. <laughs> be shit. all right now Yesterday it was groups B and C. Today we're being introduced to groups A and D. Four more matches, eight teams, and 40 more players making their debut on the Icons stage. We pulled all 10 of our okay. broadcast members for their group A predictions. Uh, looks like uh, Nova and Flash Wolf supremacy, but Rafa, you know, he's Rafa going against the uh, train here. Yeah. I think, I think Rafa, I think he's on a lap time high. <laughs> he's he's a opium. <laughs> really that one. Everyone's got no. And Flash Wolves and Rafa's like, I've got to be different. I've got to give a bit of love to that. But good job, everybody else. This is a very good set. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the same page, except yeah. for one. <laughs> All right, well, we'll, see, uh, we'll take a look later on in the day to see if Rafa's Group is Foodies Gaming will be taking the stage. But that's just a little bit. Now let's take a look at Group D, which is closing out today. Uh, as we see those on the screen here. And uh, oh. looks like this is okay. very diverse. We got some Wong Dong on there. Obviously, I got a representative of NA Sentinels. Brute We see Liberty. All four teams getting selected here. Hold on, hold on. Hell's Devils. I gotta call you out here. Most of the people on the panel got one prediction. That's okay. If you get one team, that's fine. He got both of them. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no way, man. Why do you mean both of them wrong? Sentinels is right. Okay. And he's not wrong. Surely you gotta go with at least one of the two. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Omo going with both of them. And again, Omo hasn't been wrong yet, but I feel like right there it's, you know. <laughs> we'll see uh, today. Again, it is the overall uh, predictions on who's going to get out of the group, not necessarily who's going to win today. So let's get spicy and hear some real bold predictions for day number two. The stuff that will blow up your mentions. Again, Omo 2 underscore 2. That's <laughs> where you're going to see a lot of those mentions being blown up. Let's start with you, Omo. What is your big bold prediction for the day? Well, you guys were talking a lot about Sentinels. I think that they're going to lose to Liberty. I think Liberty might even 2-0 them here. I'll dive into that a bit more later, but Sentinels can't do it, I think. You, 
You think that Liberty is well, going to win here? What? I, think, <laughs> I believe in Wild Tour. I believe in Liberty to take down uh, uh, Sentinels. That's, I feel like he's weakened here today. Stuart, can we talk some sense into this, man? <sighs> I hate to break it to you, but I think the same thing. Okay! <laughs> <laughs> I hate to we break it to you. Two this. to one. Oh, my God. All right. Well, <laughs> Stuart, what is your bold prediction that obviously you're going to get wrong too if you're agreeing? <laughs> 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 well, you might think that I'm wrong as well, but um, Lonely Kids for Game Lord, I feel like Lonely Kid is one of, if not the best Baron laners in the entire tournament, and I think that he's going to solo kill Yasera today. Okay. Yasera on the top side of the map. Okay. What do you think of that, Aramo? We'll see, right? I feel like <laughs> man, Yasera still's got some moves in him. Maybe he's going to solo kill Lonely Kid. You know, oh. I did. I didn't think that... My bold prediction was just going to be my prediction, but it, I've got my two experts here thinking that Sentinels isn't going to do it. Sentinels is going to win, man! <laughs> They're going to take care of business. I think, yeah, we'll, we'll get into the Sentinels and Liberty okay. matchup in just yeah. a little bit, but Sentinels winning, that has to be my bold prediction here. I can't believe it. All right. If it's a bold prediction, it really says a lot about them, don't you think? <sighs> no. It, it, it's not my bold prediction. They just get to take care of business. Let's go ahead and take a look at the schedule. Here's the rundown. First up, we got Kwangdong Freaks from Korea taking on Buriam United for the WC. Yes, a great budding rivalry between Korea and Southeast Asia. Then Furious Gaming of the WOL taking on Nova Esports from the WRL. Then Flash Wolves take the stage against Game Lord, the hopes of Europe. And to close it out, the very contentious game. I didn't think it was going to be that contentious. <laughs> Sentinels from North America taking on Liberty from Wild Tour Brazil. When we take a look at today's schedule, which matchups are you most excited about? Stuart, let's start with you. Uh, I think the, some of the series are going to be really, really close. I think the first series is going to be definitely close but for me it's just all about game lord you know game lord coming into this um one of the best teams in europe i really want them to show up on the main stage and hopefully they'll be able to take down flash wolves uh okay all right well my, what do you think of, uh, about that that being that <laughs> most important matchup of the day i guess most <laughs> exciting matchup of the day. for Stuart, i can understand why it's the most important matchup of the day i think that one's gonna be a pretty quick series so Stuart at least Ooh, won't have his heart broken for already <laughs> so spicy i guess we're just gonna i'm confident are you confident enough to make a wager? Of course. All right. I'll bet anything on it. All right, we'll get to that in a little bit. What is your matchup of the day here? My matchup of the day is right behind us right now. You can see the team, the players setting up. Like you said, it's a budding rivalry between the WCK and the WCS. And I believe that the WCS will come up on top. Wait, actually, no. Maybe not for this matchup. But in Whoa. general, <laughs> I think that this is going to be one of the most contentious matchups of the play-ins and one of the closest matchups of the entire play-in stage. Oh, wow. those are bold words. So let's set up the plate right now. First up in this matchup, it's Kwangdong Freaks from Korea. And they were almost the number one seed from WCK, but were defeated in the last round of a best of seven against Rolster Y, who we'll see next week as we take a look at the roster here. Maru, Zeki, Chere. Acrobat and Noth. What do you think when you see this roster here from Kwangdong Freaks? It's a really solid roster. You look across the board and you don't really see any weak links. That's why I think the Asian teams are a step above everyone else here. I think the fundamentals are so good. But if you've got to point out the star players, it's got to be Maru and Zaki. Why is that? Well, they just cracked. Their mechanics are so good, they don't shy away from any team fight. Despite KDF being a relatively slow team as a whole, their top side is not going to shy away from any fight. They are going to mechanics check you, and that's rare for the WCK. Stuart. In your expert opinion, when we were researching this team, mm -hmm. what stands out about Kwangdong Freaks? Um, I think it's very much about the the aggression, really. You know, sometimes we see the Korean teams being a lot more passive and playing yeah. more for the mid and late game. Right. But that top side, as Omo said, can play very aggressive. They go for tower dives. They go for these crazy plays. And I feel like that's really where the strong point of Kwangdong Freaks can be in this series. Okay. Well, then, with that, let's take a look at the opposite side, then, for Buriam United. Uh, you know, their uh, KDF's opponents might not have the best record, but... But they're the only squad that looked good against the number one squad from the WCF Team Flash. So let's look at their roster here. Noel, Colden Feet, Arjuni, Triple V, and what the Jess. We'll start with you here, Omo. What do you think about this squad here? Got to watch them pretty closely. Well, these are my boys, right? What can I really say? I have high hopes for this team. But in this matchup against KDF, I feel like it's going to be really, really close. Both teams have a lot of stylistic similarities as well. But if you look at the roster, I think a lot of pressure is going to be on what the Jazz to be the star player here and to lead the charge for BRU. Yeah, for me as well, I mean, with the uh, Triple V as well coming in, he 
Didn't play for them in Thailand, but he did come into the roster for the SEA finals. Yeah. He has played with What the Jess before as well. Um, so this bot lane synergy, we talk about Buru, uh, we talk about Kwangon Freaks with the top side, but with Burum, I think it's really about that bot side, especially with the AD carries that we might be seeing today from Triple V. You know, funny enough that you bring up AD carries. Their jungler, Colden Feet, used to be an AD carry, and all of these players on the Burum United side, we uh, always give them the form to fill out to get to know them a little bit. All all of them pro PC League of Legends players. So it feels like their fundamentals of understanding the game yes. were there. They've now adjusted into the speed and pace of Wild Rift and found their roles perfectly here together. So I'm excited to see how these two match up against each other. Speaking of matchup, let's take a look at the key matchup of today's game here. Maru versus Noel. Oh, what do you think? That's going to be a very exciting one. I feel like both of these guys have potential to carry games, but both of these guys also happy taking a step back, being players in the team, and they do that very well. It's not a criticism against that. They are great at playing the tanks, but I think are so strong in the meta as well. So I want to see who really comes up on top in this matchup. I want to see what approach they take. Are we going to see any carries, or are both guys really just happy to take a step back? Sure. Well, then let's take a step back and look at <laughs> what the meta has to offer here in the Baron lane. If someone was going to carry here, uh, what do you feel like is the strongest way to go here, Stuart, in terms of the Baron lane? Because it feels like that is that is our key matchup. Yeah, I think it's, it, it's very flexible in terms of champions, as you said. I think there's still a lot of champions that you can play in the Baron side of the map at the moment. You know, the likes of Riven could be played up there. We saw Camille yesterday yep. as well, but we have seen a few of the tanks. Um, but with this matchup, I think that... Um, the Riven will be a main pick and also the, the Camille as well, trying to make sure that they get the comfort onto Maru. If, if he can get his comfort champions, then he is a mechanical god and he will be able to just completely destroy him. Omo, at the top of the show, you said that this is going to be one of the best, if not the best yeah. series in all of play-ins. Why is that in terms stylistically between these two squads? Well, I want to go back a bit. I want to have a bit of a history lesson. All right. Recent history. Take, like a, that, take, right? a, take us, <laughs> Professor Omo. <laughs> well, for the WCK finals, we saw KDF lose against Rose the Y in seven games. Okay. And if you really look at how Rose the Y won three out of four of those last few games in the in the finals, yeah. I think BRU plays exactly the same way. Tank top, wave clear mid, stall out the game because KDF is a slow team. If you don't let them attack through the Baron lane, they're going to slow down the game. And that's going to be a problem for KDF. They can't make proactive plays. And I feel like when we get to the late game team fighting, the 5v5s, then it's really a coin flip between these two squads. Wow. All right. So we're going to be looking to stall out the game to get to those team fights. Stuart, what do you think? the key is here for both these squads? Um, I think we, we mentioned briefly, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see whether the teams are going to adapt to this new meta as well with all the new champions that have been coming through. Um, I think if Quandong Freaks can play through that top side of the map and get Maru ahead, I think he can definitely carry. And Burium on the bot side of the map as well. They need to make sure that they get Triple V on a carry so he can carry them to victory. All right. So we got to see matches yesterday. I want to get uh, an idea on the meta check here moving forward in terms of champion picks, in terms of a stylistic of play. So, Oma, let me start with you. What do you think is going to be one of the major uh, contested champions? We said on the Baron side, Ribbon, but what else do you think uh, has been impactful that we've seen in the first four series of uh, the tournament? I think it's going to be very interesting, especially between these two teams, because I think they have slightly different reads on the meta, yeah. despite wanting to do the same thing at the end of the day. I feel like both supports are going to want to go for aggressive playmaking champions, but the champions themselves defer a little bit. I feel like North might go for something like Leona, Alistair, whereas What the Jazz, you know he's going to be playing that trash. I also want to talk about the Marksman, because you talked about Triple V, and I think that Acrobat is going to be well equipped to handle him, because the entire the entire finals, he was playing against Rosta Y and their superstar marksman playing Lucian, playing Kaisa. He is ready to deal with that. His Ash pick, his Varus pick, I think will shut down Triple V if he tries to go for something like that Kaisa. I mean, awesome. you talk about that Lucian as well, but Lucian, interestingly enough, has been like a mid lane pick yes. the entire time yes. as well. We've been seeing Holebreaker, Black Cleaver, Lucian. We've seen crazy corky builds well. as well. So <laughs> even though you say it might be the Dragon lane, it could yes. also be in that mid lane as well. My counterpoint to that is that only the I'm going to say bad teams have picked up Lucian so far. I want to see a good <laughs> team pick up Lucian, and I want to see what they can do with it as a flex pick. I think it's still at a 0% win rate, but it yes. was like 100% yeah. picks banned yesterday, so it's going to be interesting to see how well, contested it's going to What you're be. saying is both these squads could theoretically pick Lucian. Because they're both good, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and then what do you think? If that's the case, then we're going to be looking at a very unique pick ban where uh, we've already highlighted Baron Lane's going to be important, bot lane is going to be important, 
but then this mid Lucian that can flex anywhere will become priority, and the drafts will go right out the window. A lot of the prep will go right out the window here, ML. Well, that's the thing. I feel like mid Lucian is actually not going to be prioritized by both of these teams, judging from what we've seen from them in the past. I feel like both of these mid laners are just going to default to slower picks and play around the rest of their team. If you look at both junglers, they can carry the game. I will give the edge to Zeki because I think the meta suits him a little bit more. Kha'Zix, Lisa, and champions like that, not really Codem Feet strong suit. So maybe both mid laners will try to play for the junglers, but then that might just let KDF come up on top. Stuart, uh, I want to get your final thoughts here in terms of uh, what we should expect for the fan that might not have seen it. Let's say we're talking to European fans. What should they expect from this WCK, WCS matchup? I think that it's going to be close because I think both the regions are up there as one of the, you know, some of the best regions in the world, you know, Korea versus SEA. You could put China number one, but I think if you're from Europe, I think if you're looking at these two rosters, you need to make sure you keep an eye on just how proactive they can be, yeah. you know, how proactive they can be around the map um, in terms of, you know, management of waves as well. I think that's the main thing. And around them objectives as well, because they've been delayed a little bit. So it's going to be interesting to see how they adapt that way as well. Oh, well, you got to watch WCS all the way on up. What do you expect here in terms of... Uh, how they hold up because this has been the battle between three versus four right <laughs> back over at Horizon yeah. Cup We had two teams uh, from the uh, WRL uh, Play in Dakun gaming and Thunder Talk gaming take one and two, but then it was team secret roster Y So why is this rivalry so important as it's been uh, as you've uh, been following it over the last year of uh, Wild Rift? Well, two things, right? I feel like both of these regions are extremely talented mechanically, macro, team fighting, everything, right? They check all the boxes here. Sure. But it really comes down to who has an edge on reading the meta. Because both teams, both regions, read the meta a little bit differently. The WCK tends to play a bit slower. They favor Marksman in the Dragon Lane. Whereas the C region, whereas the WCS, they like to go for mages in the Dragon Lane. I feel like that's something we will see from BRU here today. And they like to play a bit faster. I will add the caveat that BRU is one of the slower teams. Okay. But still, I think the pacing will be faster than what we've seen. Yeah, because it feels like some of these games have broken relatively early in the laning phase, yeah. right? Where it was like, okay, here comes the first gank by uh, one of the squads in two minutes, and the other team wasn't ready, and now the lanes are so far behind, it's been unplayable. You're hoping here between these two squads with mechanics that are close enough together that it won't break early enough here, Sue. I think I mentioned it briefly about the objectives as well. Because the delay in objectives now is at five minutes, I think that yes. gives a big opportunity for the laners and also the junglers as well to make them proactive early game plays. But because you don't have to go back at the four minute mark. You don't have to try and get vision at round three, three and a half minutes. You have that little bit of extra window that you can use your ultimates now, be able to pick them plays before the dragon comes up so your team can get a little bit of an yes. advantage. All right, go ahead. Well, that's a big one, right? That's something I was talking about a lot on the cast as well yesterday. You want to make a play, 340 to 4 minute, 10 seconds. Yep. That's the timing window. You get your buys in, you get your outs up. And the best part is, if you get a successful playoff, you can maybe even take the turret once the fortification drops. It's such an important timing window, and I love this change to the matter. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've seen how playing on stage now has affected some of these teams. Very exciting to come represent your region, represent your country, and here's the opportunity for these two squads to do it. Now, you've also got a team that played and skipped or got a team that almost skipped plans and a team with a scrappy underdog mentality who's taken this one let's go with you first here Omo. it breaks my heart to say this i want to root for the wcs but i think at the end of the day kdf have a better stylistic matchup here and i think they're going to take this two to one. Oh, he's going against the region All right who do you got here Stuart? same again yeah two to one to kwon dong freaks i think we've all predicted kwon dong freaks but i think korea just as a region is just a lot more stable they're just a lot stronger than sea but i think it's Omo mentioned <laughs> I think, okay. Omer <laughs> I think as Omer mentioned earlier, I think earlier, it's probably going to be the closest series of the entire play in stage, and it could still go either way. Yeah. All right. Well, there's our predictions there. Kwang Dong Freaks take this one. We'll see if uh, that holds to be true. Now, uh, for you fans at home, shout out to Sam Worms for this Photoshop yesterday of our broadcast team. They had a lot of fun, and uh, our fans have been loving it too. Let's see that one pop up because the dance moves were great, but it makes for some really good Photoshopable moments here. You can see <laughs> there on the broadcast, we it's Kangas, Riku, and Hell's Devils get their hands on up. All right, predictions are in the books, pre shows in the can. Let's get to it. Grandin and TJ will bring the match.
last year, our region definitely underperformed. But they were here to prove ourselves. This year is going to be different. A gente vai jogar contra a Sentinels. Bom, eu acho que eles vão ter que se precaver um pouco, porque a gente vai vir com tudo. E aí, no Brasil, a gente fala com eles muito. Então, eu estou ansioso para entrar no stage e beat them. Eu, com certeza, vou tentar ser o mais agressivo que eu puder amanhã e trazer para casa. Vamos, Brasil! Das Bowl, eu acho que é um time muito difícil para beat, mas eu acho que se nós jogarmos com a mesma sinergia e a nossa família, nós vamos beat them. Estamos, estamos dispuestos a hacer un gran show, así que atentos a que siempre se pueden venir cosas diferentes y cosas nuevas para, para llamar la atención. Yo creo que la campeón debe ser para... Cuando se trata de la campeón, la campeón no se trata de la campeón, no se trata de la campeón, no se trata de la campeón, no se trata de la campeón. ก็ถ้าพูดตามตรงเนี่ยก็ต้องเป็นเอฟนะครับเพราะว่าเป็นทีมที่พวกเขาคงจะมาว่าจะชนะเราแต่ว่าพิสูจน์เขาเห็นน
to this. And here's that test right now against BRU, against the WCS, a strong region. KDF have a good chance to make a case for themselves going into the international competition. We've of course seen the number one team out of Korea before. This is the second place team. KDF took Rolster all the way to game seven in the regional finals. And here against BRU, they've got to repeat that kind of strength. BRU no slouches as we get into the draft. KDF start things off with the Yumi first pick. No Ushin up on the table, no Corky either, so it's going to be the Yumi. And the reason Yumi gets the draft is because BRU have one of the best Yumi players in the world in What the Jess. KDF are not going to let What the Jess pick them up, so they first pick her. Of course, the, the response. most powerful characters in the game. Of course, the response comes through the Singe, the Varus, some other strong options here for BRU. And critically, again, it's kind of a shadow ban, it's a fake ban, because the is something that VVV plays very well, but also Acrobat is the Varus player. He is the best Varus player in the world by my mark, and he will not get to play that character. KDF want to keep that aggression going, have the Lee Sin come into play. There's so much that has been done by proactive junglers in the competition so far. When you have a Yumi, you're immediately pretty sure you're going to win late game. It kind of doesn't matter what you put the Yumi on, they will have incredible late game power. So the question becomes, how do we get there? How do we open up the action? Well, Zeki, one of the most aggressive junglers in Korea, is going to have a very hyper-aggressive early game pick. I love that part about that, because looking back at their regional wow. performance, Zeki's performance in the jungle was instrumental in their wins. But one, one player we're not talking a lot about when we talk about KDF is uh, their mid lane, Cheru. Yeah. And he's now locked in a Yasuo, which is very off-brand for him. Normally, Cheru is much more of a supportive mid laner, much Absolutely. more uh, of a defensive mid laner, and this is a aggressive star-making pick. Think about his champion pool, Gragas, Galio, stuff like that. That's what he goes for. So when you see the Yasuo, immediately that's the bet on the late game. My question is, is it played here in mid by Chera, or does it go down towards the bottom side of the map, get picked up by Acrobat, uh, and be played in like a weird AD carry role? We've seen some of that in SCN. But of course, we get to see the signature pick up here for BRU. If it's not the Yumi, oh, wow. it's the Thresh for Jess. Neat. <laughs> <laughs> Varus Thresh, an incredibly dominant bot lane for BRU, something they've worked with a lot. But also part of the criticism, as BRU has been said to be read out before, once you understand how they approach the game, especially with Jess's focus in the bot side. And one of the weaknesses normally of BRU is the middle of their map. We talk about Archony as this very passive player, Colden Feet, spending most of his time towards the two side lanes. He'll play to uh, what the Jess's control of the bottom side, he'll play to Noel's dominance in the top side. Noel, one of the best top laners in the world, certainly the best top laner in SEA by my metric. And so we're gonna see what this shift means is Chera picks up the Yasumo. Is that a plot to bully Archony in the mid lane? Is that them going, we've read the notes, we know BRU don't play through mid, we're gonna use this late game scaling character and be confident they won't be harassed. Seems to be the case here, TJ. If Quires, if Chera's gonna come in here playing the Yasuo, I mean, that just seems like they know what's up for Archony and they wanna try and punish that. And uh, the other thing I'm looking here, of course, is another kind of signature character in the mix. We don't know where it's going yet, but Noel was, of course, the progenitor of Singed in uh, competitive play. He was playing it way before it was cool. It's yeah. now played in mid a lot. My question is, does Noel get maybe this Aurelia as a duelist pick up top? Oh. Or, and, and that would mean that Archony is the one playing that Singed mid? Or are we seeing a return to the Singed play for Noel? Let's add some contact to that, because KDF ban away the Jenks, they ban away the Fiora, some pickups that have been going into the jungle quite recently. Um, and so we couldn't even expect an Aurelia jungle. That's something the WCS has shown to play before. Cold and Feet, not normally that uh, aggressive of a scaling player, I think. So my instinct is that this Singed is gonna be handed over to Archony. But that means, of course, that this Yasuo is gonna have a perfectly safe lane to operate in. Oh, and the panel has mentioned earlier before, but I'm going to hold on to that for a moment because the Akali coming through from KDF, an interesting pickup here. Yeah. Not something we've seen so much of. Like, this is a quite different composition from KDF. Here we go. So a lot of damage. This KDF normally play a ton of bruisers. You're talking like Riven. You're looking at kind of death ball front lines. Yeah. What they have here is a deletion front line. The similarities to their normal playstyle, Acrobat left to his own devices. He's going to be playing Zaya, he's going to take care of himself. Uh, he's got enough money for lunch, he's doing fine, the windows are rolled down. Sure. So he'll sit at the back of these fights on the Zaya, throw out the damage. Uh, if things get dangerous, he'll be able to ult backwards and stay safe. 
the rest of the team is going as hard as possible. And KDF, because they're playing BRU, they know this game is going to go late. That's why they've got Yumi, Yasuo, Akali, three characters that are incredibly powerful if they reach the late game. So we have the WRL style of Protect 1. The WCK style is apparently entirely different. Now it's five fight all. Yeah, I mean... The, the addition here for KDF is normally we don't see Chero as such a firm part of this composition. He's he's being entrusted with a lot here. He is their insurance policy. Having this, the Yasuo come through, you know, it's a surprise here for KDF. It looks like they want to try and pick some early pressure and some early aggression. I'm looking forward to see how that one plays, especially when you have Colden Feet the opposite side. And I want to flag the quick switch they did at the very end of the their Colden Feet get the Aurelia because they want to give Renekton to Noel that response to seeing the Akali Renekton very deadly in the opening levels of lane, very good at surviving against the Akali. It's a really solid pick for that matchup. And I'm going to fly out the side of the map as we talked about coming into this game, as the desk talked about as the most important thing here. How does Colden Feet play? Is Colden Feet able to get down onto that Yasuo early, shut them down? Is Colden Feet able to boost Noel out ahead and shut down the top side of the map? That's BRU's path to victory. And see, that's kind of the point that, that I wanted to try and bring up earlier. The Des has mentioned it before as well, but Colin Feet was previously a Marksman player and moved over into the jungle role for the past mm -hmm. couple of splits now. We need to see his performance coming into this, how he stacks up against his opponents as we go into game number one between KDF and BRU. Man, Grandin, I'm excited to watch some good Wild Rift. Yeah! This could be a very, very good This game. is already a very good start to the match, TJ. The f these drafts just... I have hope. I have delight. Triple Vs down to last... Left down to like 40% HP. He's going True. back to base. He's going to miss a little bit of the XP in the bot side. He's playing Varus, though. He'll be fine. Sure. The early levels, I think, in the bottom side are the, like the most exciting this is going to get. There's going to be a little bit of poke out from Acrobat and North. Arnie. Wow! Doing a very good job here, Cheru. Managing to punish Arshini. We have mentioned this. Uh, the idea that Singed has been played in the mid lane more of late. Uh, but of course, we've seen a lot from the well as well. So, could have gone either way. Look, they won't want to try and just bring the Singed into the mid side. So, I want to talk a little bit about the kind of dreams of these compositions. For KDF, they have so much late game assassin damage that the biggest kind of scare for them is if they put behind early and can't kill. Some trades happen across both sides just to move their opponents. Let's talk a little bit about what happens here in KDF as have to, to maintain a very strong front, pulling ahead with strong pickups. Very mechanically intensive chance across the board. Yeah, so that's Assassin was talking about Kali, the Yasuba. The thing with them is they're pretty worthless if they can't one shot their opponent. Right. All those picks need to be able to get into the front of a fight, find an instant kill, then uh, get out of the fight. And, and they have some targets to go for. Right. But if they fall behind and go during this early game, their full combo doesn't find a kill, then the entire game plan is lost. So, KDF need to have stable early lanes. The good news for them is that very are not historically a team that's going to pressure them a ton in lane. And why they drafted this style. Very I think, do have the opportunity to get that pressure, though. It comes from the two players we talk about so much when we talk about this team. It comes from the top lane have that uh, uh, Noel on Renekton, and Noel can leverage the early game of Renekton and a couple of picks. Maybe you put the economy so far behind it, uh, you don't get that link threat. And on the opposite side, you put the playing Thrash, who is the quintessential fight finder support. Trying to enable his team, get his team ahead. And I have to mention as well, recently BRU did compete in a mixed roster with another team in the SEA Games, where they mm -hmm. eventually pulled away with the silver medal. I want to think, going into this one, they've come in, refreshed, prepped again for the latest patches, and uh, hope they bring this one to a good series against KDF. Yeah. Uh, KDF, I think by contrast to BRU, who've been around for a while, I was going back and I was looking actually at one of the first casts we did together. It was this morning. I don't know why, I was feeling nostalgia. Sure. And Bury Room United were one of the teams who were casted back then, uh, all the way in season zero for SEA. That's true. Um, and the thing that I think has changed the most is the fact that everyone else has kind of come to the Bury Room style of play. Bury Room were one of the first teams to say, oh, we can slow down the game, we can stall out the game for late, we can win perfect team fights in the 5v5. And uh, a big part of that is also because of BRU's identity. They've 
feel like they are players that might not necessarily have the same level of mechanics as some of the best teams in the world, but they do not shy away from being able to understand the game. They feel like they have a good grasp of the meta. Of course, the uh, Freaks are also very experienced. Uh, a whole bunch of their players were playing in Season 0 of the WCK, the Korean League. Uh, but they were playing under two different teams, Breakframe Gaming and G-Luck Gaming, uh, who were like 3-4, 3-5, I think, is their actual finish in Season 0. Um, but very good teams, and they got kind of combined to form this super team for uh, the Conde Freaks. You take the best parts of two sides, mash them together, you make a good team. Yeah. It's kind of how it works, usually. Well, Sometimes it doesn't turn out that they way. They made a brand new team that finished second in the overall season and second That's true. by a game. So, I don't know. what If we had Leonard in here, he would go, they finished second, it's garbage. But between the two of us, I think a second place for this is just fun. Yeah, especially when it's one game off and we saw how well they were able to bring Rose to White, who are looking very strong. And that's kind of a conversation that we've been having about the Korean teams is... Uh, the the I, Rolster Y did very well, obviously, the Horizon Cup. They look very competitive internationally. But how deep does the Korean bench go? And a lot of the Western players that I've been talking to have uh, been telling me that they think Rolster Y is kind of the only good Korean team and everyone else is bad. Uh, and I have to say, I'm a bit of a KDF fan. I think their team yeah. fights are remarkably good. They play very differently from... Rolster Y in that way because they are so focused around those late game 5v5s. Look, I'll go on and say, I think KDF is the best team fighting team in Korea. Really, do you say that? You, yourself? Yes, very I'm, I'm saying this right now. I think KDF is the best team fighting team in Korea, right? I think that Rolster Y does a lot of things better than KDF. Mm -hmm. That being said, KDF does a lot of good things as well. And one of the, good, the best things that they do is team fight. And, and we have a little bit of that in other regions as well. Uh, we're, like, I sure hope so, TJ. Good team fighting will get you. <laughs> good team fighting will get you like 90% of the way, and the top team is the one who understands how to avoid the team. Of course. Um, and I think that's definitely the case over in Korea. Rolster Y, very good at when they play KDF, avoiding those late game five v fives, pressuring them in the sidelines, and kind of the only times that that goes wrong are when KDF are able to reach the hyper late game. And honestly, if you are joining us in this point of the broadcast right now and you're wondering what's the pause. difference. Yeah, oh, you are in a sorry. pause, but what's the difference? What's coming into this series? Why is this series one of the best play-ins? Well, KDF, we've talked so much about them. We've done a bunch of research. Cheru, their mid laner, has been a staple in the mid side, but he's been someone to facilitate the rest of his team now. An aggressive option, pulling out the Yasuo mm -hmm. against Archini. Such a different look from KDF. And I and there's a preview of one of the I think most interesting rivalries of this tournament as well. Because everyone's talking about the WRL, the Chinese teams. They are going to be the best. That is kind of indisputable. And there are a couple of teams from every region that might be able to compete with the Chinese teams. That will remain to be proven. We'll kind of be waiting for groups, I think, to get a really good idea of that. Right. But the most interesting matchup is SEA versus Korea. Uh, because those two regions, the WCS, very good historically in mobile esports. Korea, not as big a game in mobile esports. And so they've brought in all this expertise in PC League of Legends, they've brought in this tremendous esports infrastructure, and they're using that as a way to kind of subsidize for what the SEA region has, which is this tremendously rich history. Bury Room United have won world championships in other mobile titles. There is so much experience specifically with phone games in Korea, or in uh, SEA. In SEA, yeah. That I think there's like this very tight uh, pack right now between the two of them chasing it, nipping at the WRL's heels. Absolutely. I mean, look back towards BRU and the WCS Finals. They were in a very close series in a best of five against the ultimate victors of the WCS Finals team, Flash, nearly bringing them down to the lower bracket. That Two and three in the end. That was the most games anyone took off Team Flash. Like, yeah. we're, we're Team Flash waiting in the group stage. We're not going to see them for a while. Uh, but th that was the most games anyone has ever taken off of Team Flash over the course of that bracket. And you have to keep in mind, Team Flash going into this one, into the WCS Finals, did not lose a series in their regular competition. They were looking so dominant. They completely took control of the stage the moment they stepped in. Once on the WCS Finals stage, they were incredibly dominant. And it was BRU that was ultimately able to challenge them. Yeah, but not beat them, so that's why they're here. <laughs> yeah, that could be said for both sides. True. Sure. 
Uh, I do want to give you an update. We just heard from production that we are swapping out some equipment on the stage to make sure that the match is as competitive as possible. We obviously want everyone playing their of ideal course. game here at the international final, as it should be. So it'll take a moment. I think we're getting it sorted. There's no question as to what the issue is or anything. Look at that! Wow! That's me! That I did that! All you. All you had to say was we're switching out the equipment. Give me, we're a, back. Give me a thank you, TJ, the champ. <laughs> As we go back into the game, a couple of things that we want to watch out for. Let's go back and hit those points again in case you've forgotten. It's going to be that top side, that Noel Maru matchup. It's going to be between the jungler, between Zeki and Colden. And we all get to start to see Sharu moving in to start dealing damage against the Irelia. Maybe pull away the scuttle crab. And so much of this early game is going to be really quiet. Um, you're exciting bottom line. Well, I'm wow. not sure if this is how exciting this is supposed to be. It's quite a scrappy no fight. Way. A couple of spells used. But on the other side of the map that we see first blood happen for Maru. And that is disastrous. Noel counterpicked the Renekton into that matchup. The dream was being able to beat Maru in their own game. He dies in the top lane simultaneous to V being forced to reset for the second time in lane. Yeah, Triple I, V's had a tough time here in the bot side. And I said that kind of the dream here for Burry Rum is they're able to make a dent during laning phase, slow down those assassin carries. Grandin, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much slowing down is happening? I, I, this is pretty slow. We've got, like, we've got some road bump, we've got speed strips. Slow now. Well, on the mid side, a nice pickup here onto Archini. Another pickup for KDF is... This is becoming just dangerous for Burry Room. They need to try and trade back. Dominus popped here, but Maru still has a false execution, so... A lot still to be done here for the Akali. Yep, really scary. So KDF now... Oh uh, my Fine kills in mid, fine kills in top. Uh, they get the resets in mid and bottom. And that's just going to mean that there's no way for Burry Room to participate during the early. What are they waiting for? Well, when you get late game, very scary. Uh, the Renekton's gonna be big and the Aurelia is gonna have to count. So, Colden Feet, I guess it all comes down to you. Here is the kill. Colden Feet actually went for the recall right on time and Noel wow. drops to the Ignite in the end. And Colden Feet, if he hangs around there for a moment, might be able to save his ally, might be able to get revenge. And of course, a look back at mid lane as well. I mean, just doing all the work for himself, Cheru gets the knockout wow. and the ultimate onto Ashni. In the bot side, a double kill. What do we miss here, TJ? What the Jets and PvP, I guess, stepping up. But a big problem here for Noel as Maru is trying to ramp up. Were you asking me about the assassins on KDF spe speeding up or slowing down? Was that what you were asking me about? Yeah, and they're speeding up. Granted. Okay. No, okay. So BRU, they're on some, they're on some bad terrain right now. All yeah. right. But it's all smooth sailing for KDF until that bot side happened. Yeah, uh, one kill got passed over to Cold and Feet. One kill on what the Jets. It looks like we'll get a look at what happens here now. Right, Colton Fee gets walled down towards the bottom side. They have the Vanguard's Edge, that just makes things easier. Of course, you can always rely on, on Jess for the Death Sentence to land. And the final all attack to pick up the second kill. Good to see Colton Feet stepping into lane. Kind of too little, too late, I'm afraid, for Puri Rem to make a dent in the hard carries. Acrobat going to be fine to just leave lane, play passive in the fights. That's his goal. Um, they need to get something onto Choir during this early phase. That's why you see this full rotate. Yeah, Cheru gets to, is going to have to back away, but that leaves Triple V alone and exposed in the bottom side here with Maru coming in with his clip. Flash away and exhaust <laughs> immediately used by Triple V. VVV <laughs> walking all the way back behind his second turret. Miles away. <laughs> this will mean the KDF get to crash two waves, so more gold lost by BRU, but they did get the top turret. That's first break, so it balances out. Noel and Colden Feet getting some cash. But it seems like BRU want to contest with the Rift Tower. They're not going for the Dragon instead. Yeah, they're not trading here. And the fight is interesting. If what the Jess can find a good hook, start the fight well, it's possible. KDF start to walk away. But Lee Sin is so scary right now. Back in the brush waiting. He gets a good amount of damage onto the thresh. A very nice intercept coming through a triple B man. Get the chain oh. of corruption. Death set that's comes to drop. Gone. And the final attack to get the kill that Zeki down. And Colden Feet keeps pushing here. Colden Feet just wants to dive down on the turret, but he's tagged up, taking damage, pulled back by the feathers. That's a huge kill for Burry Room. They managed to burn through the jungler, which of course means that KDF aren't going to get that Rift Tower they were positioning for. KDF are going to have to reset. Burry will, will get their own chance to cycle in and out. Not so easy here for KDF to pick up the objectives. 
I think KDF have just started it again. There's no vision here, uh, but they will see Acrobat going up to it. So Buriram know what's up. Here they come. They have to scuttle crap on top, on top of the shrine. So BRU start to walk in again, looking for the re-engage entry back on for the fight. Getting knocked back. Archie does not find his entry and go in. Spike comes through. Zeki still gets a rip tear, but he goes down in the process. Now they're looking for the second kill. Ashi takes a lot of damage quickly. Ignite comes across from Maru, but BRU managed to walk away. Only Zeki dead. KDF still okay with that. Zeki, the early game presence. An interesting choice here by Cheru. He's going to get tagged up by what the Jets. A beautiful oh. corruption out from Triple V to take down the Yasuo and now onto Dragon. And this is huge now that they've killed the Yasuo. Cheru, a massive part of KDF's big game. Burnham could turn immediately down and take the Dragon. To pick up the Dragon, get to walk to the bot site, looking for that second turret. And I think that undoes everything that had been doing against them. The gold lead now in Burnham's pocket off of that cross map play through the top lane and a series of team fights in the middle of the here's the rift old summon kdf tried to get some control back i mean it is varus he might be safe but there's only so much he can get done to get three members and the rift tower in the mid side but team will trade so it's tower a mid for bot side for it. top side archony in the spot of danger. so we were talking a lot about PvP, who's looked really good in this game so far. This is his first stage game with the team, but it's not his first stage game with what the Jess he played with what the Jess previously done, I believe, in Vady Sports. Right. Uh, where they, what the Jess came to this team, then they needed a sub because the regular uh, Dragon Laner couldn't come. Bring in one of his old teammates, and you can see the practice. VVV, a huge part of those team fights, landing on arrows, playing very well. I will put this out again, though. Noel in a Spot. I mean, it's not to see the impact of losing late early. Yeah, and he's just trying to get away with something he can't get away with. So aggressive there, out of position in the river. There's no way for any, no reason any top top laner should be positioned like that. Oh my goodness, again, Good almost enough. takes down Maru, gets the death sentence initially, but not able to get the follow up crowd control. Top turret does fall during that time. KDF uh, grabbing the bottom turret. And this kind of pressure from what the Jess is coming out as we expected. He's being the leading edge of this team. You see him harassing Zeki in the jungle. Oh. <laughs> and all of this just makes it harder for KDF to play their scaling game, and it gives Buriram opportunities to take fights. One thing I'm worried about, though, KDF still have that ticking time bomb. The Yasuo, the Akali especially, but also Acrobat playing the Zaya. All these characters are going to be so strong in the late game that Buriram needs to be making more of a dent than trading even right now. And we see how well KDF is able to activate those champions when they do find some good fights. Unfortunately for them right now, BRU still have that early game advantage with a number of the champions that they have. Strong crop control. Oh, good cross, But not enough time for the rest of his team to follow up. And that seems to be the issue here for BRU. A very slippery escape by Zeki. Stays ahead of the chains of corruption, which were blown there as well. So VVV doesn't have all. We're looking for a re-entry angle here from Ashley on by the top side. Trying to get his way into the river, but not able to make his way in, forced off. So much of this game coming from what the Jess right now, leading the team on the map, and letting Archony on the sin sh shift into that very supportive role. He's playing the sidelines, he's getting clear. Oh my, wow. flashing from what the Jess gets the Ignite down as well, finds the catch onto Noth, maybe a hunt onto Zeki, but it's gonna be difficult chasing after the Lee Sin. What an incredible play from what the Jess, and they're still hunting. Really want to find a pickup over on the Lee Sin, but he manages to dash away this time around. The Flowers Duet does not tag him either, but still pressure out from BRU. And VVV, a huge part of that. Look again at how well coordinated he is with this team, hovering in the middle of the map, stopping the resets with his piercing arrows, which are now going to start doing serious damage. His Muramana is about to complete as we head into this next series of objective fights. VVV will be a threat, and Bray will need to protect him and set up for those big combo plays. Land a hook on the Stun them for a year, get the kill. And Triple V, this the rough start to the game is now reaching that power point, like you've mentioned. And so, as they start to fight around the Rift Herald again, something to watch out for. It's Rift Herald controlled by KDF. He played them as well. Arjuni on a long fight. I'm waiting to see if he does something. He just resets. He'll give it. A little too far. Too long. Nice flank. Not, this, this is not worth it. Uh, we have Hull Baker Noel trying to subsidize his disaster early. Him and it's going pretty well. You can see the gold difference skewing back towards his team. Also, him as a player, no one has been sitting in the sidelines farming up. An interesting position here from Achi now, trying to fight two versus one. Gets tagged here, finally, after the comes across, but a flat wow. away from Achini. Still keeps safe for now. 
really good flash. That's very dangerous, and he's able to flash out of the final chapter, making sure that the blows don't land with the perfect timing to his game. But the resummoner is burnt on the side of KDF to look for the kill on the top side. KDF don't get anything out of it. They kind of rebuff the efforts of Buriram for the moment, though. That pickup of the Rift Herald is going to be critical because it gives them a tool with which to fight around this next track. They can summon the Rift Herald, force Buriram to pay attention to that Rift Herald, and to fight while they're split. That's the KDF drink. Again, they don't need to win right now. They need to last until Yandro gets big. That's going to be around his third item. Currently at two. Once he completes his third item, he'll be really scary in these team fights. So KDF just want to last. They just want to buy time. One second on that dragon. BRU in position to take control of it, but at the same time also going to shove in the mid wave. For them, it's so much about Acrobat right now. He is their team fight. He's not doing as much damage. He's shorter range than VVV. But if they can position him well, he can win them a team fight. He's far away and it's going to be difficult to get into the fight, especially with just there. But the death sentence was used a little earlier. Dominance coming in for well as well, but do not have the entry into the fight. Anshini is the one to look for it, but falls no away for now. The well finally gets to come in. Oh! The red jumps in, finds the damage that they need. He's going to continue making good work on the corner. A second pickup kill, but Zaki goes down and back to the chair in the mid lane. BRU want to find back it's an equal trade across the board. What a team fight. Both jungles killed. That means the mountain drag is just going to be vibing for a moment longer, Grant. And that's what happens when Acrobat to put out damage. We saw him fight in the choke point into this jungle. He got good damage down. BRU One more forced away. Piercing arrow. Piercing piercing arrow. arrow. Triple V goes wide in between both targets, though. This piercing arrow is starting to hurt. Mortal Mana completion has threatened. Yeah, absolutely. Acrobat, the other side of that coin. Those fight both AD carries delivering. And watch this opening combo. Final chap with the knock up for the kick. And Chero just cleans massive last whisper. That's what you want. That's the dream. And if he gets his damage online upon the completion of the third item, those are two kills. That's three kills in the middle of the fight. He's not there yet, but he is getting there. Of course, while he is starting to hurt, while Triple V is starting to hurt now, physical damage or magic damage, the biggest one is psychic damage, DJ. True. <laughs> but I, I will pitch this. KDF, if you're on their team, that's a good team fight. We're not trying to win. We didn't need to take that mountain drake. We just need to stall it out. And being able to bring it to a later point of the game helps them so much more here. Buriram did get that Mountain Drake eventually, but it took yet more time. It bought yet more space for KDF to scan. Trying to isolate Cheru here. This is they big. Made their way down to the bottom side. The play would He's not gone. manage to land for now, but Noel eventually claims the kill credit for that one. His patience pays off. That's it, buddy. <laughs> That's kind of the opposite of everything we were just talking about. Cheru needs to be the carrot. Well, I mean, if I was Cheru here, okay, I would take psychic damage from that. I was by that brush for a very long time. It was waiting for me. And <laughs> no one just sat there. Waiting that's for it. You need to know that. You are the character. And here we have it, trying to force an engage over on the Acrobat. But Ashley's being slowed down by the Fellows as pulled back. He takes damage wow. out from Zeki. They take down the mid side target. The shield coming through from Jess to try and keep him alive. But here we have the flank from Maru. He goes Maru. into the shroud. Corner feet left alone. And a triple coming out for KDF. And Maru picks up two of them. A clean flank. Weaves through the back of the fight. The Zeki starts. And KDF present alternative carries. And instantly turn up to this Baron. Baron got it up. They have to try and pick this one up. Jess, the only one still here. Teleport coming up from Spawns coming through from KDF as they teleport into the pit as into well. Into the pit? What the Jess? What are you doing? He's going into the pit right now. The Wow's coming in. They need to try and fight for this. How Jess left alone for so long. The Ignite onto Jess. Oh! But he gets the kill onto Maru. Now starts to walk in. Does not have the dominance. But Baron's been reset and is still alive at this point. One Go more out. second on Conan Feet. The teleports need to come in now. Fighting time into the teleport. Into the back of the pit. Inside the pit. But they get in and they got Finds that that first kill, the second comes in, oh, and now it's Acrobat going down in a prime gaming ace and a triple kill out for BRU. Golden Feet team in the fight after what the Jazz stalls it out for so long, and they find a triple kill. Arsene soaking the entire team fight in damage. KDF wiped for 20 seconds. That could be game number one. I don't know if the waves are in position, but they're going to be able to take an inhibitor. So an express path at the bot side, but they split up the attention to the Maru's mid lane back. and the bot lane. Maru's back. He needs to save the team for 10 seconds. Fortification will be up, so it's going to be difficult to finish off the game here, but two inhibitors nonetheless. Buriram back off, take the two inhibs. 
What a play from what the Jets. What a play from Noel. Here's our Coca-Cola pop off and check this out. What the Jets stalling for such a long time. I thought he was insane going over the wall, but he uses every part of his kit perfectly. He is insane. He <laughs> uses every part of his kit perfectly. Watch this lantern to keep himself alive through the ignite. And then he stays there on vision hovering while Noel flat, uh, kind of harasses on the opposite side and sets up again for Noel to go back into the pit. Noel gets down to his last tenth of HP, stasis is so he can be used as a for the teleport. And the teleport's come through. Um, what do you know, Cold in the middle of a half HP team. It is drained. He is eating. It's a feast. And he's fed now. He's well fed. Seven, two, and three. Cold and feeds come online. We talked so much about how Maru and Noel were the big difference makers, and they have been. But someone else at the factory into the equation has been Cold and Feet. What do you perform for Cold and Feet this game? Oftentimes, more of a supportive carry. Oftentimes, more about ganking his side lanes. Here, Cold and Feet is delivering us a stellar carry performance. And the WCS WK WCK rivalry continuing. Start with a bang. Delivers <laughs> on day two icons. Pressure in multiple lanes now with the Superman pouring in. It's going to be almost possible for KDF to turn. I say almost because Chapa is quietly online now. I suspect he has just completed his, I think it's an IE, his third item, Infinity Edge for the crit. Um, and there it is, yeah. So he is going to be so scaring in these fights now. KDF, despite everything, can win a team fight. Burry Room need to play this safe, leverage the fact they have total back control, leverage the fact that KDF can't leave their base, take this Infernal, take the Baron, and the game. Of course, one of the weak, weak points here for KDF is that Cheru does have to do all of the work by himself here. We should talk about it though. Elder Infernal Drake. Of course. Two dragons on BW side. We're gonna team fight for the game right here. There is no two ways about it. One more fight decides this game. Noel is off in the Baron lane, but he does not teleport. I'm looking towards just if he's able to get that pick up on the Noth, which he does not. But it's been a very strong fight starter. Does Noel stay the course or does he start wandering over? So far he's sticking up there in that top lane which could be disastrous. He's, if he's not here with this fight when it starts, KDF will have an advantage. KDF can easily win 4v5. But if Bayram can keep storming out, eventually someone is going to have to go up and deal with Noel. And then Bayram thriving. They can easily start this Elder, and that is exactly what happened. Golden Feet's working on the Elder slowly, but sure, but he decides to back away as he now find a fight over by the after pit. Golden, Golden is going to buy a little time for triple VS Acrobat. That's a dive. And Noel comes in for the flank, though. No they take him down Acrobat, and that's fight damage gone that's noel sliding in from the side and with perfect timing as ever the title lane prodigy finds a kill and now stalls out and of course he's going to be able to act as that wall preventing kdf from coming in dragon's range burn zeki doesn't have an easy way to clear the pit steal it can be so hard and he does need to steal it if there's any hope for kdf defensive line out here arjuni and noel stopping kdf from getting close to the dragon pit will not allow themselves the Half same HP. position. Cheru starts to move in. They're looking for a pickup here onto Archony, but we have the Dark Passage coming through from Jess to keep them up. Vanguard's edge Archony over down. onto the back, and even with the final chapter, it only stalled BRU and a double nonetheless. Yeah, Zeki's dead. This should mean the Elder's easy. Chero still hovering in the mid lane, trying to clear the wave. As you should, as you have to. Chero comes in here, but he's only got the knockoff on the Jess. You might find the Thresh, but that's not much more. Teleport's start to come into play. Noel's walking in, dodges away from the Shuriken Flip, but the Dragon's still here. Dragon reset! Dragon reset! It's gonna go all the way reset! Burium stepped too far out! It's gonna take them so much longer. There's Zeki still not on the board, but here comes KDF reset from their base. It's still over on vision. Acrobat still has his ultimate up, mind you, so he gets oh. to move away. But now if he gets one shot like that over to the back, they try to dive in, but Cheru's gone as well. And you still see Maru trying to cut and trying to buy some time, but the dragon's gone down and the minions are in the base. Zeki's gonna respawn, so at the very least, this is gonna be the end of the game by the minions. But here comes BRU. They won the fight around the Elder like three times. And it looks like they'll have game number one as the stat boost from that Elder Infernal is so massive. So that's an interesting question here, TJ, in data entry. Sure. Does it count as three fights around Elder or uh, one extended fight five. around Elder? Five. 
Fine. <laughs> By each time, Dragon resets. So like, how does this work? Uh, I'm going to go with two fights. You have the first kind of sprawling fight that happened through the jungle, and then you have the reset where they teleported everyone in off of the positioning, like Acrobat respawn, came back to the fight. Right. I think that's it. When somebody dies and then respawns and teleports back to the fight, that's a new team fight. Right. So if it counts an ace twice, sure. That's okay. Farming Prime Gaming Aces here <laughs> over on Free Review United. <laughs> Gotta get the same day delivery. <laughs> BRU in a very strong position to win the game at this point. Two Dragons and the Elder now in their pockets. They get to try and pressure out the mid side. The only turret still is the top side turret. Obviously comes in to pull Zeki back. Sharon was trying to stop them with the wind wall, but you can just see Jess running in so quickly now. He has a dead man's plate, and we start off with the sentence. The cap on the chair root, the swell goes down well in the web as well. Flash is looking for a target to pick up, but the Nexus is dead and exposed. So BRU pick up game number one. What a win for the WCS, and Korea continues to look weak internationally. Look game at this number one in the bag for a team that is glowing on stage. We heard them shouting all the way from where we are, which is like outside of the little stadium setup. I, I would say 20, 30 feet, all game. I don't they know what- They are shouting, they are yelling, <laughs> and they earned that way. I, I can't do feet, so I'm just gonna go, yeah, sure, 20, 30 feet, sure. How many meters? I figure we are at least like eight to nine meters away. Sure, those are two very different distances, I will tell you that. Yeah. I am much further away than you are. I reckon, I mean, I'm looking at it right now, I figure that's probably about where we are. Maybe my, dis my sense of distance is a little How off. do you feel as a WCS caster right now? I feel great. And I have to say, it looked shaky for the, for a moment at the start. Looked mm -hmm. like KDF were able to pull ahead. And uh, I feel like WCS recovered very well there. Yeah, I mean, that was the Bury Room dream. They got to those late game team fights they're so good in. And what do you know? They started winning them. Noel came in from the sideline. Disastrous early game. Knows how to farm himself back into the game. His play through the sideline sets him up for that kind of late game team fight success. And a good strong start here for BRU as the WCS WCK rivalry continues to heat up. We're going to toss it back over to Analyst Desk to try and give their rationale for why their predictions are not wrong. <laughs> Thank you very much, Brandon and TJ. That's a very funny way to put that. Thanks, man. Uh, all right. So, Desk, we thought uh, the freaks were going to run away with it. Not the case here. Omo, you were saying, how do you feel? So this is the way you do it. This is why you play both sides. You bet against your team to win. Ah. Make, you, you root against your team. And if they win, you're feeling good anyway. I it's see, a win-win situation <laughs> here. You see what I'm doing? You have a win can't prediction lose. or you just win because you love the team? Exactly. Perfect. You can't lose. All right. Can't wait to try that one later. <laughs> America. Let's get into this one specifically. And we wanted to start with the draft because there was a couple of things that, that we were surprised with, starting with yes. the Yumi takeaway, the top lane matchup, the Thresh, obviously and then the Singed Yasuo. So, uh, Stuart, go ahead. Yeah, for me, I think the, the draft with that Yumi first pick taken away from what the Jess, because um, it has been one of his pocket picks. He was very known for his Yumi, for his full AP Yumi build as well, but this time we saw it on the other side by KDF instead, and it didn't really work out too well, um, but the, then it, the Thresh came out for what the Jess as well. Yeah. And the Thresh is just an amazing pick for what the Jess, right? He personally prefers the Yumi from what I've heard from the guy, but I feel like when he's playing trash, he just carries the game, man. He's just 1v9. You look at his performance, you look at how he just controlled the map. And this is one of the criticisms we had for BRU. They are sometimes too reliant on Jess to make plays. But when he plays like that, <laughs> uh, it works out. Yeah, and we'll, we'll get to the hero replay, the hero moment. Probably one of the craziest moments we've seen so far in the tournament. But let's start well. back on this top lane. <laughs> it was rough for our boy Noel in this matchup that he countered with the Renekton yes. into the economy. So this is kind of what we were about back as well, right? The Renekton pick into the Akali, it's a bad matchup, but you shouldn't be losing this early on. The rationale, I think, behind the Renekton pick, behind the Bok Rush, is you look at the champions that are coming out on the side of KDF. You have the Lee Sin, you have the Yasuo, you have the Zaya. These are all champions that can be very hard to lock down, get on top of. Renekton does that, slice and dice, flash, stun them, point and click. How do you outplay that? How do you be too slippery for Renekton? You sacrifice the thing a bit too hard? Oh, no, no, sacrifice! The lane. I think he <laughs> lost the lane in that, right? <laughs> Again, yeah. but I, I like that uh, kind of down of it where the lane ended up going a little bit harder, and we got to see later on how important that flash stun yeah. was coming uh, from him in the top side of the map. Stuart, what else jumped out at you in terms of how this one played out? Uh, for me, I, the, kind of that synergy between um, Zeki as well as 
you know, the jungler and the top laner from um, KDS did work out um, in that game. They did get like a little bit of an early game advantage as well um, on Maru again um, on that top side. Um, it's just really interesting to see, you know, how both teams, you know, Noel, since he went so far behind, TJ mentioned it briefly, you know, he went to the side lane, he farmed up a little bit, and then he just focused the Zaya, focused the main carries of the fight every single time. But that kind of causes a problem for BI as well. This is something we've seen in the WCS when Noel is side laning, but his team doesn't quite respect the timing of that one. They're not really on the same page, and then you get caught out in mid lane. But right. this play right here. Yeah, when it comes to our amazing support versus four play here. We were sitting in the back wondering, what is he doing? Everyone at home has been wondering, what is he doing? He pulls the lantern out, stays alive for a little bit longer, but it bought enough time. Baron dishing out enough damage, and then Noel coming on in to stall, and we're like, okay, cool, that was cute. We bought a little bit more time, but here is the big moment. And then it's a stasis as well from the well, and he just allows the TPs to come in. And even though KDF got the Baron, they just get completely wiped, and that just gives full control of the BRU. I believe they got like two inhibitors after this as well. Yep. Um, and then it got down to that main team fight in right. that dragon with Noel. Up until this point, it was a start and stop, literally a start and stop with our technical pause as well. And then we finally get this fight here. And this fight right here just shows the power of BIU's team composition. If you ever step up too far, they have so many tools that let them just pick you off one by one. And that's the mistake that KDF made. They trickled into the river and BIU was sure to punish that. Yeah, and uh, Noel finally getting his revenge after yeah. he bodied <laughs> both in the laning phase, then his team losing that team fight while he was splitting, then the flash uh, stun ends up getting the kill, and we get our first major upset so far. Again, just one game, not a full series here, and you see the reactions from Birmingham United. Pretty calm. They're like, okay, we had this, you know, we knew we had this within us. And the, I love how Zaya has the most damage. As an AD carry made myself, <laughs> as a Zaya lover, I like to see that. But the thing is, is that the Yumi build was very interesting because the Yumi build was actually going for like full AP, going for Star for Flowing Water, where you go towards more the Akali because the Akali got ahead in the early game. Right. But Zaya wasn't able to do that much this game because the Yumi didn't go for items, you know, like the supportive items like Arden Sensor or anything like that. So. I'm just going to be interested to see how KDF kind of adapt to that. Will they go for like an AD carry bot side again with an enchanter support? But I want them to try and focus towards that Zaya more if they go for that more. Yeah, I mean, we take a look at the gold graph. Baron United <laughs> was mainly in it the whole time. Yeah. But you can't help but wonder if that Baron doesn't go wrong, if you're able to get that last little bit of damage on what the Jess, or at least pull off and, you know, not, not die there at Baron. Because TJ was saying it over and over again. This was just playing to allow the Yasuo to scale. Wait till... Uh, Cheru was at the point where he could carry because we saw a couple of times where uh, the Yasuo ult was crushing these yeah. team fights and setting him up, setting himself up by himself. It's the least in Yasuo combo. It's something we've seen time and time again, working to varying degrees of success. Sure. Here, KD, I think they pulled it off very, very well, but I think BRU did draft themselves options to deal with the Yasuo in the late game, namely the Renekton as well. I think the Singe are very good answers into that. And I want to touch on the rest of the draft as well. I think the brilliant pick here that I really like from BRU was that Irelia. It was something that's plagued Coden Feed in the past. He plays the Jack so well. He plays the Fiora so well. Well, well now both are banned away. What do you do? You take a page out of RIQ's book, you play the Irelia jungle. Yeah, because, and that, again, think about it. When we started, that was where we had the technical pause. You called it out earlier. It was like, hey, that Aurelia is not moving anymore. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine what the mindset is like for Cold and Feed, who's like, okay, I'm on yeah. a champion that I'm less known for, but I'm farming relatively well. I'm getting myself set up. Didn't have too many early ganks, but I want to get to level five. I want to get my yeah. ultimate ready. And then has to reset after sitting there for a little bit. What a show of mental fortitude by Cold and Feed. So great job there. Especially in a jungle matchup like I really into Lee Sin. If you get a little bit behind, Lee Sin's going to run over you. The fastest tempo jungle in the game. Yeah, definitely. Stuart, so when we take a look now on uh, game two, the second chapter of this great story that is happening right now, let's say you're Kwang Dong Freaks. What are you telling your team if you're coaching? If you're Quantum Freaks, I think, you know, the early game went pretty well. I think you you need to make sure if you're Quantum Freaks that the, the team fights are just a little bit better. You know, they need to make sure that they actually focus on the team fights. There was a little situations where I feel like Quantum Freaks were kind of split up. They weren't really grouped together, and that's really where uh, Burian were able to come out on top in them late game team fights. And it, it's just the Baron calls as well. That one Baron call, and I think Omer mentioned it briefly as well, you know, them little mistakes, if you make that little mistake, that's it. In a game of Wild Rift, when there's like 15 minutes on the clock, 40-second death timers, the game can just switch just like that. 
I, again, I want to caveat it, though. I feel like the Baron Call is not bad. It was just such a great play yeah, by what the Jest did so by the time, right? So clutch, really. Yeah. I, I mean, people always say League of Legends is a game of inches. Well, Wild Rift is a game of centimeters, then, if you call it that <laughs> way. <laughs> Especially with how fast that one was going. All right, so for the opposite side, I know you predicted Kwang Dong Freaks, but I'll give you the forgiveness can, can we now. Back <laughs> no, no, it's too late. It's already in the books. <laughs> Omo, who is always correct, might be incorrect in this one, but again, happy for it. So give me the uh, game plan here for Birmingham United moving forward. Don't change anything for BRU. I think they're doing a very good job. On the side of KDF, though, I would add one little caveat. Okay. I think you shift one thing in your drop, which is you prioritize your AD pick a little bit higher. I know you want to get the dual lock of the Lee Yasuo. I think you just get the Lee, you pick up the Ash. I think that was the problem there. I feel like, yeah, Tosaya did the most damage, but she just didn't give the team enough of what they needed. Right, that's fair. Again, uh, that was our second AD, like Stuart saying, like our second AD pick. We have a lot of AD casters, yeah. but we had the Vayne yesterday locked on in that does a lot of auto attacking. So Zaya being that second one with a lot of auto attacking. And, and that's the thing as well is that Zaya can be a carry for you. You know, even though Maru did get head at top side, I think the Zaya can still be the main carry, especially you know with lethal tempo being added as well, um, with the Yumi in the bot side as well. I feel like if the Yumi did prioritize maybe towards a little bit more towards the Zaya then it could have gone in their favor, to be fair. So it, it's a little well. bit difficult back and <laughs> forth. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult. Um, I'd like to see more hyper carries. As you mentioned, you know, we saw Vayne yesterday. We've seen Zaya today as well. And we've mainly been seeing these AD caster bot sides and Mages bot side, but I want to see more uh, hyper carries. Well, my read on it is uh, Alden Sense is not going to save you from not being able to auto attack. I know every other <laughs> list here. I know Stuart, Hell Devil, TJ all said that this was going to be the Dragon Lane patch. And I was just saying, you're still going to play Varus. Some things are not going to change because in Wild Rift, you cannot auto attack. That's the problem. And I feel like even if you build Ardent, you're not going to be able to save the Zaya there. So what's the solution then? I think you just drop the Ash higher. Pick up an Ariana. Pick a something which is easier to play. Ease of execution is truly the name of the game, I believe. Yeah, get yourself an AD caster or an AP mage yeah. down there on the bottom side of the map. We'll see what happens here as we'll be doing the draft on the analyst desk Woo. with you. Kwang Dong Freaks and Burium United. The surprise game win by Burium. They're one away from taking a big upset here and solidifying their spot as the number two region here. Again, yeah. remember, this is number four for Burium United of the WCS against number three, Kwang Dong Freaks, as we have ourselves game two underway. Let's take a look with the draft here. Kwang Dong Freaks, they going first. This is a very exciting one, right? Will they go for the takeaway? Will they prioritize what's strong for them? What bands are gonna change up? I feel like you, you pretty much just run it back with one tiny adaptation on the side of KDF. I think both teams other than that are happy to just run it back. It's interesting that KDF's uh, picked the uh, the blue side as well, probably trying to get, gonna try and get another first pick, maybe potentially the Yumi. Might even try and ban out the Thresh, because I think the Thresh priority, yeah, with, yeah. the Thresh was just way too good, because I think if you take away the Yumi and you also uh, ban away the Thresh, then what does what the Jess even go back to? Yeah. And remember, uh, Burium and I were on the back foot. We yeah. had the kills on the top side of the map. I think it was two of them. <laughs> and then Colden Feet able to get the gank down on the bottom side of the map, along with what the Jess and VVV, and all of a sudden two to two. And I think after that, Burium were able to calm down, calm the nerves, and then settle into the game, which turned into that start stop there team fight go. where no one really won it. And yeah, there's Colden. the respect band coming out of Kwang, Dif Kwang Dong Freaks. And this then puts a question into the minds of BRU. Do we then want to get rid of the Yumi? Because then what's our answer to that? If we give you the Yumi, what are we really going to pick up here? Jess has a pretty wide champion pool. You might go for something like the Sat, Alistair, Leona. There's still options for Engage, but they're much less powerful. I think the Rakan is also a pretty, Rakan, yeah. Yeah, pretty decent pick into Yumi as well, because if Yumi jumps out, you can just yeah. jump in as Rakan, use the charm as well. So I think Rakan is another pick, especially really with good the team fight as well. Barris ban as well. That's an interesting one. I really like this because BRU last game had a lot of focus on their Dragon Lane to really set the tempo of the game. Sure, they kind of messed up level one, but they recovered very well here. So the band adaptations from KDF are good. This also means less priority on snatching the Ash Shelly. You can still go for the lead Ferris of the Yasuo. And this actually opens up a lot more as well. Lucian is open, Corky yeah. is open. There's, you know, we've seen Lucian, one, like when it is open, it's always been first pick. So now the KDF, pick the Lucian here, or did they take away wow. that Yumi, and they're going to take away the Yumi? That's a very good point. Where are you now? Are you just going to snatch Lucian? Yeah. Are we going to see both of them in the same team? It's a possibility. Ooh. Noel posted on Facebook yesterday, Lucian, number one priority in WCS. Where do you see Noel, Lucian top? <laughs> I'm going to say we're not. He's teasing it. I mean, Triple as well as the AD carry spot yeah. side as well, so they be it. Look at that. He heard me saying it. The Lucian, man. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Singed and locked in. Very excited. So, Kwang Dong Freaks, they get the Yumi. 
Now they have their pick of ADK. We were talking Ash earlier, being something possible for casting. Stay a little bit further away from the Corky. Lee Sin gonna get locked in yet again for Zeki. Pretty much just a run back of both of these team comps, and I think it's very fair as well. These are picks which were successful. None of these picks were the reason why you lost the game. So you have no qualms just running it back. Interesting what Corky build we see. As well. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it depends on the role as well. Arch yeah, for sure, yeah. Arch happy to play at Triple V has played at a ton in the past. Let's see how that one yeah, shows up. Yeah, in, in our highlight package, we had Triple V rolling with it, and there's the Lucian going to the other side again. Oh. Uh, Brim United opting into the Singed first, and so now Lucian heading on over there. Again, one of the highest priority uh, champs in all of Wild Rift. I feel like this, there's a trade that's always happening. You know, I think most teams prioritize Lucian over Corky, but there's been like a, a mid lane. We saw it yesterday as well in day one, where it's just like Lucian, Corky, mid lane, both building Holebreaker, both build, uh, both building Black Lever and Ooh. focusing more towards the side lanes. But Zin Zhao pick. I think that that's an interesting adaptation. I really was not a bad pick at all. But my idea here for why VRU you picked the Zin so early is that it's a good pick into the Lucian. What's the strength of Lucian? He's an auto attack based carry, right? But he also has the calling, which is so effective in team fights. Well, Sin just does a spin and he negates the whole thing. <laughs> And, and also, Lucian is a very short range AD carry as well. Yes, he has to get very, exactly. very close. You know, Lee Sin wants to dive in as well. Yumi also wants to dive in, so Xin Zhao can knock them all away as well on zone. On zone I point. think we might actually see our first Dragon Lane Lucian here because you have the Lucian Yumi combo. That's an extremely strong combo. You might see it in the mid lane, but I don't want to see that again. Not another Hellbreaker Lucian. Hit, <laughs> I, I hate I hate to break it myself, but there, you can see that the support pick actually hasn't come through for BRU. So now they're even banning Rakan yes. away. So Thresh is gone, Yumi is gone. Now also the Rakan has gone. You said the potential. Maybe set, like maybe. Alistar or yeah. Set or even Leona, a Leona. Well. Yeah. There's so many options. But the thing is, the lower you go the tier, down tier list, the less effective the pick is. So he might have picks, but they're not what you want. Well, that's what we thought with Colton Feet and Aurelia. Yeah, exactly. So let well. me, let's just clear that up a little <laughs> bit here. We don't know what these uh, teams have been cooking up since they finished up with their respective regions tournaments. So we see the second round of bans, as you said, the Rakan knocked away by Kwangdong Freaks. There's oh. Set getting taken away. So this support pool starting to get really chomped down here by what the Jess on the opposite side it was Renekton and Garen taking away. So the focus on the top side. Oh, okay. Okay. And love it's this. Sona getting love locked this. in here. This maybe even might be a Sona. A Nasus bot lane. We have awesome. seen it in other regions before as well because you already have uh, the Singe. You already, I mean, this could even be a Singe mid Corky top or Corky mid Singe top as well. This, this is still a very flexible draft, and obviously, with BRU on the red side, they can leave that last pick and they can reveal their comp. Uh, uh, you know, There's last. There's a lot of flex potential, yeah. right? But what I do love about this is the Sona is just a fantastic answer to Yumi. It's something we've seen in the past. What does Yumi do? She scales up. Well, guess which Enchant Enchanter scales better than you? AoE healing, AoE shielding, as well as that crescendo to really just match your final chapter in a sense. Sona is a great answer to Yumi in a different sense. We're not going to attack you, we're just going to outscale you. All right, so Sona logged on in, and it's the Monkey King. It is Kong <laughs> getting locked along okay. with Diana. It is, it is a Lucian bot lane, then. It's going to be yeah. a yeah, Wukong top dynamite uh, Lucian bot lane. I don't think we're going to see Holebreak in this game. I don't no, think you yeah. go for Holebreak or Black Sea Evolution bot lane. You'll probably see um, Storm Razor, Infinity Edge. I, I mean, Essence with Fever maybe. Yeah, with a, with a Yumi as well. Like you said, it's a really strong early game combo as well. If you can play aggressive, which KDF did go, did do um, ah did do the last game as well. This is a pick I want to touch on really quickly here. It's a pick that the WCK does not play. It was played. 15 times, I think, in group stages and zero times in playoffs. But Noel, the WCS, they love Darius. And it's going to stack up against all those melees, and I think it's going to pop off. All right, here we have it. A unique draft coming out of Burham United. Big reactive bans here by Kwangdong Freaks. They need to get the win to continue this series, to get on into game number two. Let's send it on over to Big G and TJ. Thanks a bunch, Jared Degon. And I'll tell you what, a unique draft is a good way of putting it. We'll have to see what we have in store for us here. We have with a Shona? I am already over the moon. A Shona in competitive play, BRU with one game advantage, pull out a very exciting spin on their draft last game. They're still looking to the late game. They're still looking for the tools to shut down once they get to those late game 5v5s. Now those tools are utterly useless for the first half of the game because that Sona isn't doing anything. <laughs> no, it, it, it's really not. And we look back to what's hap happened in the first game. KDF, they got ahead with the lead early, but they weren't able to hold on to it. Right. And so what we're looking at during the early game is all about the changes. They brought Illusion into that bottom lane, uh, which as the desk talked about, is to give them a little bit more early game power, and the Yumi will extend the range. Usually you talk about Lucian kind of 
holding off as you reach the late game. That's not going to happen in a game where the Yumi is paired with the Lucian. And you also have uh, Lee Sin. So, of course, my early game, looking at the Lee Sin versus Xin Zhao, jungle matchup that's happening versus between Zeki and Colden Feet. Uh, also, paying attention to that bottom lane where Lucian needs to bully Sona. And if they don't, if Acrobat uh, isn't able to earn that lead as a Lucian player into a Sona lane, that's a very bad sign. Let's talk a little bit about Colden Feet here because he okay. was kind of the, the gem that kind of emerged from the fire. He was the Ooh. remnants left over, right? And we saw through all the early game action as his bot side. or something. <laughs> it was very good. His, his bot side was losing, his top side was losing, but Colden Feet held strong and we saw him go into that mix, that game with his Irelia performing exactly where he needed to be. Yeah, and, and I was initially very critical because we saw a lot of the pressure from Cold Feet kind of not going towards lanes that he needed to boost, not going towards shutting down key targets. But what it did do is it got Cold Feet a gold lead. Yes. And he just played full scaling. He said, I don't know what's happening in my side lanes. I do not care. I am in my element. I am unperturbed. I am vibing. And when we got to the late game and his team had, because he trusted his team to work their way back into an even game by themselves, and they did, then all of a sudden, Colton Feet never left. He's been here the whole time. He can easily find the triple kill when his team needs it inside the Baron Pit after a Thresh has blast coned into the Baron Pit and single handedly found a kill and stalled out. You know, things that happen right. in VRU games. That's true. That's true. Trust in his team to get their way back into the game one way or another. Can I just say, while we have them on screen, I do adore the BRU jerseys. <laughs> Like, if, you, if anyone could hook me up with a BRU jersey, I will wear it. Look, I'll, I'll tell you what, guys. All right, you guys are listening at home right now. This is not, like, the first time TJ has been telling no. you about the jersey. Like, he has been insisting how much he's liked the jersey. It's the, it's the center stripe. And right now, he's, deliber he's quite literally calling for someone to give and him the jersey. And then there's a circle in the middle that's, like, broken up by the center stripe. Like, my goodness, the shamelessness of this man. <laughs> Look, I've got a verified tick on Twitter. If it's not good for getting me a free jersey, <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, <laughs> a lot of love for the BRU team in the WCS. We have a lot of expectations for them, but of course, a strong competitor is still here in Condom Freeze. And you know, it makes sense that their jerseys are so good because they're a football club as well. Oh, so very um, uh, the, the like management over there, one yeah. of the biggest football clubs in Southeast Asia, a huge football club in Thailand. Uh, obviously, they have a lot of experience designing jerseys for players of, to wear. Of course, wear. yeah, you, you have to have stuff that people would want to buy to support and the teams. Oftentimes, when I look at esports jerseys, I'm like, that just looks like a sports jersey, and that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because yeah. we love them, but they're not running up and down a field. They have different needs. They're in this kind of cold, air conditioned studio. Uh, but th those look comfortable. Wear. Those just look like shirts that you could wear and have a good time. Right, you could have an inner t-shirt if it's a little too cold. Yeah. You, know, you could take it, the, the inner t-shirt out if it's a little bit too hot. You know, it's a perfect balance. Thank you for the close-up protection. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing some meta-analysis on, on the t-shirts. Uh, what was it jerseys. you asked me about KDF a minute ago? Um, just something about KDF being good. Yeah, they're very good, Grandin. <laughs> uh, one of the best teams in Korea, and what we saw in that last game was one of the things that makes them one of the best teams at Korea, which is their individual power. They're incredibly good in those side lane duels. They're incredibly good at finding those early leads mechanically. I think right. especially Maro is a monster. And we didn't really see it that game because he was a monster in the early game. And we got right. to the team fight. And BRU here, 5v5 time, Maru never got to play. He had like one team fight, where it, or two team fights, where he was able to successfully assassinate VVV in the back lines, do the Akali thing, shut down the carry. And then he would do the assassination, he would turn around, he'd be like, all right, team, wait, where's my team? Everyone was already dead. They'd lost the 5v5 while he was diving. And a big problem for KDF is going to be dealing with those issues where they have that disconnect coming in, where if Maru's ahead, he does not get to play the game, his team's gonna die before all that happens. Yeah, and I think the thing that we need to see from them in this game is tighten up the team fighting. Recognize that BRU have the mechanical talent and especially the team planning talent to go toe to toe with you and play it much more respectfully. We saw a couple of different uh, uh, kind of staggered engages into fights and just stuff that I know for a fact they wouldn't have done versus Rolster. That first dragon fight where they just kind of wandered into the dragon fight and they're like, hey, I think there's a fight here. What the Jess takes you apart? He's one of the he best really support does. players in the world. He's going to land hook after hook after hook. My goodness. He's gonna start wearing an eye patch. <laughs> Got so many hooks. <laughs>
It's a pirate joke. It's a pirate joke. It's a pirate joke. I get it. All right. Well, as you guys might be able to tell right now, the game is paused. It's a teensy, tiny little technical issue. We're going to get the result for you guys. We appreciate your patience. BRU and KDF, the second game, and day number two of the Icons Global Championship coming your way again very, very soon. Look at those hands of fury. Those hands can make you cry if you match into them and so look here. <laughs> we had a, actually, I think it was one of the KDF players. Uh, I think it was Acrobat. Yeah. We had a clip that we were sharing among the casters uh, that came from, I think me and Leonard watching some VODs. Okay. And we had, there's a shot that the Korean production team on the WCK got that's over the shoulder of Acrobat as he's playing Ash. Yeah. And he's kiting backwards and you can see the motion of his kiting. Just he's moving backwards with his left, left thumb on the joystick. He's got his index finger on his right hand wrapped around the screen to pan the camera. Right. And then his left hand is drag targeting the auto attacks to different targets as he's cutting back. And his like inputs are like incredible. It's like hundreds of, hundreds of inputs in this clip, which is maybe five, six seconds long of just him fighting. What he's fighting during that entire time? The Krugs. And he's kiting <laughs> away from it. And I'm like, and I'm looking, I'm like, this is incredible. His macro, his thumbs are moving so fast. He's kiting Krugs. Okay, not Krugs, Krugs, but we have blue buff on screen. Oh, very good. Uh, <laughs> and while I'm a watch party across the globe right now, one was in Bangkok, Thailand, rooting for BRU. I so must imagine. Sarah, who was in the red jacket? I couldn't. That was together. Draven. That was prime time Draven. Draven. Oh. Yes. See, I don't know what any of the Draven skins look like because I'm a good person. So. Um, I feel <laughs> like. So. so <laughs> that was the time though. Grant did backpedaling so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Stepping back. I'm trying to figure out some rationale and excuse for why I would know. Um, uh -huh. Did you know I actually have once done an event celebrating the launch of the April Fool's Draven skin. How did it go? It was a show match and it was one game and I went down to the studio and I was there for one game. It's a good day's work. <laughs> That's showing up, getting paid, going home. <laughs> So, Draven skins, uh, that's why I know them. Surely, of Right, course. because yeah. you did that with event. I did that one event. Um, definitely not because I'm a Draven abuser. And we, I learned this recently about you. You are an AD character player. That is How correct. Do you, uh, do you, we, we had this debate. Uh, Leonard was just arguing with me, kind of passive-aggressively through the analyst desk. Sure. How do you feel about the presence of like other AD characters? I'm like a big believer that maybe we'll see some Tristana this patch. Maybe we'll see some Ezreal this patch. I think it'll be in a really niche position, right? It'll answer specific problems that need to be solved. But mm -hmm. for the most part, I think it's just easier to play casters. And you think about what competition does, it always looks for the easiest answers to the biggest problems. I've got my theory. All right. I think right now, Lucian Veras, obviously, right? Yeah. Lucian Veras zigs, very safe picks, things we're all used to. That's because it's plans. When oh. the good teams are at their <laughs> elimination block, when they're like, we got to pull out what we've been working on, you know who's going to come out instantly? The best of both worlds. Ranged caster damage. Okay. A stun that can hit anywhere on the map. Close range, burst damage. Sustain. But Ash isn't too divisive. Like, Ash is a genuine pickup that we have seen. I agree. Here's some replays from the last game. Uh, as we saw what happened during the early game, this was the first time Colton Feet kind of showed up on the map, flying through that bottom lane. Oh. Oh and no! Oh <laughs> no! That's not. <laughs> oh dear! I think that might be the most emotion we've seen out of a coach all day. That's true. Something so far. been able to see from from that part. Um, I don't know. Who was if it? I had to watch my teams lose a fight, I would feel really bad. Who was it we were watching yesterday where they were winning a huge team fight, and then we cut to their coaches and their coach was just sitting there? It was. Oh, I remember that one. Um. That was actually a series that I did, but yeah, I don't. Yeah, first game of the day. But I, right, I think it has to be. It has to be JDG then. I think it was JDG. JDG, you know, just That's calm, incredible. cool, collected. That's what I want. A, a coach that you can impress. <laughs> a coach where you win the world championship and he goes. I good. would be very easily impressed as a coach. I, I'm just saying. I would have high expectations for sure, but I'd be very right. easy to impress, and you know, that's just. And the second somebody wins a team fight, we can cut to the camera jumping up and down. Absolutely. Here's I'm what I will excited. say. You want to sell jerseys, Staple, have a great jersey, like Bury Ram United do. Second of all, make sure that any time you cut to the coach cams, any time you cut to the player cams, you know, your heart's on your sleeve. 
you know, you're, you're excited, you're celebrating. That's how you sell jerseys. So that's all the KDF coach is doing there. He's not disappointing his players. He's making sure that people are invested in the team. I didn't know we were signing up for like a marketing theory class. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to my seminar. Today we're going to be discussing how to sell different kinds of esports merch. <laughs> the two steps to selling esports jerseys. The reason why we are talking about selling esports jerseys is because there was a slight issue on stage again, uh, and it's all getting sorted out. They're cycling out some equipment, but uh, it will be re resuming, and we'll get into game number two in a moment. Absolutely. Well, we have a bunch of things that we can talk about. I'm going to ask you for your opinion on what you think it's it's going okay. to be. Well, actually, hearing from production right now, we're going to toss it over to the analyst desk. I think they'll do a better job of explaining that stuff, I suppose. That's not true. They've got <laughs> Leonard over there. <laughs> Well, uh, let's let's hear from Leonard actually if he thinks that 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 is the case. Wait, if what's the case? Did he has good opinions. I don't know. Leonard, 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 do you think Leonard, you do a better job? I, I, do you have good opinions? The the says, so. <laughs> there it is. Also, yeah. by the way, these guys have a podcast together. I'm sure it's a lot of great communication between the both of them. <laughs> do you have good opinions, Leonard? Good opinions, of course. The best. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of question is well, that? Well, he says it then. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, fair enough. So I, I guess feel like we're gonna TJ have to. and Omo could like talk the whole evening if they wanted to. <laughs> you know, they got podcasts and everything. They can keep talking back and forth the, 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 whole, the whole time. Exactly. And yeah. I also need, Digon, as we hand things over to you, uh, some thoughts on the jerseys. I want a full power rankings. Exactly. That's what I was about to say. Mm -hmm. I think the jerseys look great. I mean, if we take a look at uh, the Birmingham United jerseys, they look like amazing. Are they people. better in person? Yes. I have one, by the way. They yes. are better in person. What? what? Yeah. You have one? Yeah, you course. kept that quiet to TJ, of didn't course. you? <laughs> TJ's like, I want one. It's like, oh, like, no, I'm built different. I have the best opinions. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the time, the jerseys are made out of like sweat wicking technology, but generally, a lot of the venues are cold. So all that happens is you like start freezing, which means you have to wear something what underneath. I would say. The jerseys that Birmingham United have are they look like great polos? They're like yeah. polos, almost like bowling, bowling yeah. jerseys, right? I'd go and golfing like in that jersey. Exactly. Exactly. So I think that would be a great jersey to wear because then you can wear whatever you want underneath. The color scheme that they have is great. So uh, United A plus in terms of my ranking of their jersey. Something I can say that no one else can as well is the fabric is also very good. <laughs> <laughs> very comfortable. Very percent comfortable. All right. So it looks like our game is about to get back on into it. Gents, you did a great job talking about everything. But now let's talk about the game. Talk about the game we shall, as we are about to move into game number two between Kwandong Freaks and Ram United Esports. Unfortunately, know, we I will not have to hear the power rank in the jerseys just yet. You know, I'm pretty confident that what the audience wants at this moment is another solid 20 about jerseys. So I feel like we can <laughs> just circle that. <laughs> we'll talk over the game. We'll, okay. we'll talk, right, we'll okay, talk over right, the game. Right, it's right. fine. It'll be a background video. You guys get to listen to TJ go on about jerseys for the next 20 minutes. It will just... Leave the game running in the background. So if you have forgotten for some reason what the draft was <laughs> in the midst of all of that, uh, the takeaways were Birmingham United uh, doubled down on the late game. They, of course, won through their late game, 5v5 yes. team fighting last game. This time around, they have a Sona. Sona, very good in late game team fighting. Very useless early game, which means KDF, the mechanism through which they looked scary in that last game, was the Lucian, uh, or was their acrobat dragon lane, was their early game presence uh, from Zeki in the jungle. And this time around, that is Lisa and that is Lucian. Lucian in Acrobat's hands rather than the Zaya. Zaya, a very defensive late game character. Lucia, ver very, very good early, very, very good at pressing an advantage. And we so. need to see them keep that one going because they had an advantage last game and they weren't able to capitalize it, capitalize it all the way through. No, lowercase. Lowercase. Lowercase okay. advantage. And that's kind of devastating because the way that an advantage like that gets uh, undermined, the way that it gets lowercased, is if somebody that you have bullied for the first 10 minutes of the game is allowed to farm at the side lanes, get gold on the map, and climb back into it. That's what Noel did. Um, and what we need, what you need to do to stop that, the thing KDF should have been doing to prevent that, is spreading out over the map, threatening every available of gold. Chinese teams are very good at this. If you watch WRL teams, once they get a lead, they will, uh, Team Flash, also very good at this, they will be invading the jungle. They will be taking away every bit of camp farm that they can get access to. They will be making sure that whenever a wave is within their reach, they're pushing it. Instead, KDF kind of got split up. We saw uh, Chera, who is on the Yasuo, really focusing on getting side lane farm himself. He's like split pushing a mile away from the rest of the team 
not catching waves, not working with the team to prevent farm from being picked up by Mel and by BRU. So, see both better champion picks, love the better champion picks, also need to see better play with Queen. We can talk about jerseys now if you like. <laughs> sure. I don't have anything else on jerseys, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. What do you think about the colors? Good. You like the blend of colors? You know, I was thinking about it. I lied. I have something else on jerseys. I was thinking <laughs> I actually, knew it. <laughs> and the way that it matches is the back of the stadium is really nice. I yeah. like that it's kind of in that sync is. with what's going on. I think home ground advantage for Brody Rock. So a bunch of jerseys are always a uh, solid block color. So, yeah. great. True. Over on the KDF side, uh, we're talking about them kind of failing to earn their, or failing to, to pass through their early game advantage. Kind of disappointing for them as well in the team fights. I charged on them earlier, but we know KDF is a really good team fight team, Grant. Yes. We know them as this team that is so good in the 5v5, and it didn't feel like they ever got a 5v5 on their team. So a whole lot of that is because of what the Jess, yep. who is a monster, and he's been able to go in there, disrupt the back line, start fights that KDF were not looking for. Mm -hmm. Make such a big ma make such a big mess out of the situation for KDF, you know, they can't really ever get in. I mean, you talk about, like, pressing advantages and making sure that it's just uncomfortable for the other team to get gold. Do you remember that sequence at the very beginning of the game, right when BRU start to bring things back under control, where they find a kill in mid and then what the Jess is, like, invading near the blue buff? Yeah. He's all the way at the watch party in Bangkok, hanging out with the cosplayer. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's the kind of aggression that makes it hard for your jungler to just do their job. It slows down the clear. And you can see how much it helps BRU to have a player like what the Jets, who's unafraid to leverage his tank HP as an expendable resource to say, I'm going to go in here, they're going to hit me, I'm going to get dropped low, but the entire time they're hitting me, they're not farming. And as long as I die, that's lost gold for them. And so that's the next part now, when we don't see that big tanky support in the bot side, when we have stuff like Sona now on the table, to see how that adaptation is going to come about. Just is no stranger to the insurance type support, so to the damage dealers, you know, when you look at the way he plays Yumi, he plays it full AP damage. Uh, please do not try this at home. Or do try it at home, it's really fun. Sure, whichever you guys might prefer. So that's an interesting flack, right? Because the, the way that he plays Yumi and the way he kind of, I don't know if premiered is the right word, popularized, certainly. Sure. Is you go Ludin's Echo and then you go into just full AP damage stats. Rabidon's Death Cap, the whole nine yards. And that means that your heals are really powerful. Whenever you hop on someone and you heal them, you, they gain a whole lot of HP and all of your poke matters as well. So, question here for what the Jess, are we going to see him prioritizing that poke on this Sona? Is this Sona going to be the t kind of champion that is genuinely hurting in lane. Sure. I think you could build Sona like that would be quite curious. Oh yeah, absolutely. Right. And, and here's the thing here. Quandong Freak's going up against BRU, moving into this game number two. KDF, they need to pull back. They have to come back in. BRU already have the first game win. Yeah, this is huge. Burry Room United, a one game lead in a best of three series. One game away from upsetting Korea. One game away from proving that the fourth seed out of the WCS <laughs> can beat the second place team in Korea. That would be a major story for our deck. And so much happening here from the get go. We already start to see Noel moving into the mid lane against Cheru. And so a very different setting than we initially expected. Acrobat, where I put so much of the emphasis, kind of this bottom lane being a force that can shoved through the game. So far, you can already see how difficult it is for Asona cont to contest that. What the Jess and Co. falling all the way back, not pressing for those waves, allowing Noth and Acrobat to run this early game. We can start to see... Wow! Taking quite a bit of damage to start this one off. Yeah. But yes, Asona. Just getting pushed back, just getting pushed back. And then we look towards the jungle here as well. This next big matchup, Zaki and Golden Feet. Golden Feet's performance on the Irelia. Commendable last game now on the Sinjal. Slightly different. But they are able to execute slightly better. Well, it, it's interesting because the Zin Zhao is going to be better in enabling his side lanes, which is what we traditionally expect Golden Feet to be doing. Uh, but it is going to mean he can't be the late game carry for his last game. If you remember from late game, he was the force that came in and won the game in the late game. Cold and Feet on Zin Zhao cannot do that. He will be a tank in the late game, nothing more. So, this early game needs to be about Cold and Feet getting into his side lanes, maybe fixing this bottom lane as Acrobat continues to just harass. And harass, he does well. 
Jess not only loses health, but also loses mana. He's out of mana. Gotta he's, go home. He's, out of, he's gonna stick around. I can guarantee you that much, DJ. I think he got more. I don't know if that's just the fruits down there. Very curious how that happened. Might be the case. Um, first, uh, Scuttle Crab Skirmish has come out, and because his bottom lane is losing, Cold and Feet can't press into that. Because if he tries to fight for the Scuttle Crab on the bottom side of the map, then his bottom lane, or the bottom lane of Acrobat and North will just rotate up. But Zach is doing a great job now, looking for the gank in the mid side. Green will tag up the well, the barrier comes in, but a flash in, when it comes lightning, misses wow. out, and first blood over the KDF. Cold and Feet still pushing, leveraging the presence of Jet, but he can't catch him. A little too far away is the follow up here with. We still see the ground coming through. Aru narrowly misses out on the kill on the Argeny. And that's just good old fashioned pressure from Choir. Eating the mid lane alive, Noel forced back and back and back and terror. Finally gets him low enough that Zeki can lurk all the way around the side, get the kill even with the hover safe of Colden. Colden knew that play was coming. He was waiting just out of it to try and join in, but Zeki Dragon's Rage kicks Noel out behind the door and guarantees the kill. Unfortunately for BR2, once again, we start to see a rough start for them, but exactly what we were hoping for from Quan Freeze. This team that needed an early game advantage has started to find one. It's Zeki again, finding those early game leads for his team. That's what you have Zeki on your team for. That's why he's one of the best junglers in the world. And his impact is going to help Quantum Freeze get to a point where they are able to find these fights well. Well, you would hope so. Absolutely. I have firm belief now in Zeki. Is this, is this an official prediction for Grand and Gamer this MO? Do I think they win the game? Yes. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. Because <laughs> it does come down to those team fights, and during game number one, KDF had a similar advantage. I will say it gets them to the team fight. BRU took him apart. Arch really hurting here. Recently, Wukong was buffed slightly. Stone's getting passive, honestly, doing so much work here. Arch wow. Back, losing health very rapidly. Pops the ultimate. And it, the flash. it's really interesting that they're putting Maru in this matchup versus Archony. Uh, that Archony has opted into it. I understand why it, maybe it makes sense on paper to do that, swap Noel uh, and Archony changing their positions on the map here. But it does mean that Maru, one of the best top laners in the world, is getting to operate against Archony. Noel, one of the best top laners in the world, is stuck in the mid lane where they're not feeling so comfortable on Darius. First one coming up here in the game. BRU are going to reset, come back in. We start to see a brush set up here for Colin Feet. As well as Noel, they've managed to spot out Cheru walking by into the mid side. Triple V looking to try and intercept, flashing in with the upper hand. They jump in over on the Cheru. The Diana going to go down. And what the Jess manages to huge finish off with the damage. But a huge moonfall comes across. And Colin Feet, the next target, a response out from KDF, even with the Crescent Strike, will not be able to live. That's a positive trade. Colden Feet goes down, and he's not going to be able to contest this dragon. But Noel once again with the pull, but it's too aggressive. The crescendo will not save him. Triple V in the mid lane too far away. You have to back away. If you don't have the smite, there's no way you can contest for the fight. So KDF have full control. They run that area of the map. You back away, you go for Rift Herald. Instead, oh dear. Dragon going down, and Archony going down with it. KDF, 4-1 on the board. Burirum, keep walking in. You take the trade. If they turn for the Rift Herald, they're well set up for a late game that they're so strong in. Instead, they take the fight and over an Ocean Dragon, and this gets worse and worse than the one-for-one -one trade they initially started with. They managed to find a massive moonfall then. That response initially, and then you have the final chapter, the lockdown of the Golden Feet. And here you go. Okay, Colton Feet's dead. That sucks. We're going to go take the Rift Herald, be able to burn it relatively quickly. Uh, and instead, they, they kind of one by one walk into the Dragon Pit. Noel leading off, Colden Feet already dead, so there's no other tank on the team, which means when Archony decides to contest it on Singed, it's just very weird. Maybe a little bit of game one overconfidence coming to BRU. Game, the confidence from game one spilling over into game two. Yeah, exactly. As uh, Rift Herald started here by KDF. Likely going to pick up both objectives to start up in the game. Which is a massive advantage for them, obviously. They're going to have the gold from both those objectives, but also the Rift Herald kind of books them free control of the map. I want to see them drop that into 
I suppose they could go for the raw gold here. I'd actually like it in the mid lane, because the big thing they want to do right now, okay. Interesting spot here from Ashni, but a little bit discoordinated yeah. as they flash in with a crescendo from Jess. Cheru gets picked off, and the whip becomes his lightning to snipe away Zeki. Acrobat Amaro will be able to farm away at this bottom turret. They will get a break. But that was a very weird take from Zeki and uh, Chera. They did not have vision on the top side. I didn't think they were going to engage because they had no idea where Buriram were on the map. Right. And instead, they take the fight and lose because of it. Lose because they don't know there are three players on the top side. A turret is a turret. Turret's a turret. They That's got true. one on the bot side, but two kills going down for it. Not the best buff for KDF. It, do, it does mean a slight reduction in the gold lead burn room, get a little bit from those three kills, even over the first turret break. KDF do still have the Rift Herald in their pockets, so they will be able to take at least one more. Now, here's the here's where I was going before that fight started. Because they're starting to take turrets, what KDF now needs to do is what they didn't do last game. They need to manage these waves and make it very difficult for Burry Room to farm. They need to make sure that Burry Room are struggling to get gold on the map. Because if this Sona keeps scaling, this Corky keeps scaling, if this Singe keeps scaling, they're going to be scarier in the late game. Almost unkillable in the case of a Darius and a Sona on the same team. So keep the gold away from them. Make sure this Singe doesn't get damage. Keep the pressure on. In any ideal scenario, you would want that. Uh, keep the gold away from the opponents. Uh, Thanks, Grant. <laughs> I'm just paraphrasing what you said, <laughs> TJ. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm learning stuff from you. I'm just parroting what you said. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately for KDF, BRU will not take that easily. They are going to still stick pretty close in gold now. Uh, just barely, not even 2,000 gold behind. Just a little under 2,000. Really good turn from Burry Room off that top fight. Um, and that gave, that gave them a lot of gold back over. And it gave them a lot of gold back over onto the people that you most want to have gold. I think Archony getting a ton of gold is important, but PVV leading the team right now. <laughs> that right there is an esports package. Yes. The jersey included. <laughs> uh, of course, the timer on the package is just expiring, so. We throw it down in the mid lane. It'll clear wave. I think it's still around as the wave gets there. Archony popping his ultimate as members of KDF start moving away to the top side. You see Cody in the flanks waiting. Turret will go down to the combined efforts of KDF. Trade here, mid lane turret pressure in exchange for top lane turret pressure. Uh, but of course, no. Is there defending the mid turret? He clears wave. Noel might get a turret down bottom. KDF leading in gold for now. Still Wolf Raw exchange here for Noel. Maru quickly on his tail. You do see the hunting fruit up, and so Ignite out for Maru would not amount to too much. Maru is scared of this fight, rightly. Derry is very scared the 1v1, which makes me just kind of question the decision to put Archony against uh, Maru in lane, which does seem to have led to a very big monkey. Might have been trying to anticipate something else. Maybe Maru goes into the mid lane. Sure. Uh, Rift Herald summons here a little out of position just because the timer was running out. It'll wander slowly into the mid lane. And I, I think this is actually a pretty big misplay because Burry Rim Khan do anything, uh, or Burry Room should be able to stop it, and KDF can't do anything to enable it. Yeah, goodbye, Shelly. That's a very interesting spot here by BRU. You start to see now, they are getting a little bit impatient. KDF are also responding in turn. KDF with good macro, um, but surprisingly, being caught out of position, and BRU clawing back in gold somehow. Zaki, a little out of position, Noel hunting. In the back him. of the pit, but the bigger one you have to watch out for is Cheru caught out. The crescendo used, though, the upper head pulls back. Noel is standing in the face of KDF in the first execute, looking for the second. It does not reset, but still, BRU hunt them down. And now Maru bringing off for the great escape by BRU with three pickups. And immediately, because Zaki's out of position, BRU know they can take the fight, and they go. The second they spot the opportunity, it's Archony starting things off with a big push into the middle of the enemy team. They're going to get a Drake for it. Look at Archony. Protobelt dive in. He draws so much fire, immediately pulls out an easy kill. And then Noel steps forward to be the front line to sweep things up. The damage amplification from what the Jets a quiet factor in all of those kills. And I love the dynamic between the crescendo and the final chapter where you just have that instantaneous quick stun on the crescendo. While well, the final chapter needs a few more moments to stack up, you now start to see BRU ramping up. And we've touted KDF's amazing team fight powers. Well, it does.
doesn't matter if they can't win a team fight, they can fight for it. Yeah, again, KDF losing their lead around the dragon fight. As they step into that uh, uh, dragon, they're out of position. Zeki's in the pit without a clean way to get out of it. The rest of the team is wandering through a choke point. It's, it's mispositioning from KDF against a team like Buryrum that is going to force them. And now for the second time this series, Buryrum have a gold lead. I think the last game, BRU actually got the gold lead swung back in their favor a couple of times. For like the third time this series. And so it's so interesting to see how these two teams are in such a tight race here. KDF not willing to go down without a fight and they've had two early game leads to start off their matches. Well, they need to, they need to find it again. It needs to be a great team fight and from Acrobat. With Arjuni, but instead it's Arjuni that pulls them back in. Cheru comes in with a move fall, but already his damage deal is gone. Acrobat dead and Cheru chased after a double for Triple V. Acrobat dashing into range of Arjuni, who just grounds him, just drops the ground, makes sure he can't dash away. And the second he caught Relentless Pursuit away, he is an easy target, an easy kill. Acrobat's dead, and so are the KDF hopes of a team fight. Burium turned immediately onto this Baron. And a strong, strong pick up here from Archini. Playing for the Singed in the top side. A little interesting, seeing how they've moved the rolls around a little bit. But still coming in here, getting the pickoffs onto Acrobat, being able to displace the opponents even through the exhaust from Acrobat, was still able to get to that AD carry. Yeah, really good use, very useful in those specific matchups into Lucian, into Lee Sin, uh, into the Wukong, which actually, I think I've solved it, the ground is for the Wukong. Right. And as it slowed everything down, that makes sense. Archony was just able to find the pick in the team fight didn't work in lane, works brilliant when you have other sources of damage. Martini grounds Acrobat, even with a Yumi on him, even with trying to heal him. It just doesn't matter, there's so much damage from the rest of BRU who are pixel perfect with their target calling. And now, Baron in hand, they're looking for a game end granted, a series end granted. A calling used earlier to clear the way by BRU is marching in closer into the base of KDF. You start to see now Arjuni once again looking for that opportunity to pull someone in the mid side inhibitor. Goes down the first of this fight as Noel finds his first pickoff as well. And things are done here for KDF as BRU dive them on the turret. A massive crescendo on the three. Pulled back once again. Noel, a massive force. The whole BRU show the power of the WCS as they take down KDF 2 0. What a win for the Thai team! The first time that Thailand has had a team on the international stage, and my, do they deliver. Showing up here at Icons and getting a win over the most feared region coming in for many of these Western teams, for many of these uh, teams in Asia. They're talking about, oh yeah, the WRL scary, but yeah, we got to play Korea. There it is, BRU with a statement. And that's how you start things off. One of the most exciting matches in the play-ins. A close competition, WCK and WCS, a budding rivalry. And BRU will strike first with this 2-0 win. And that puts them very well positioned to get out of this group. It's very difficult to see Buryrum not getting out of this group. On the opposite side, of course, the Freaks now need to play for their tournament line. Not a position they thought they'd be playing for headed into today. Second seed from the WCK, we saw some brilliant moments from them. Standout performances from members like Maru like Acrobat, but of course, BRU. Show me the selfie! With the win in the end. Of oh, course. that is well oh. positioned. Look at that. This is this is all planned. This is... That is teamwork. TJ, do you remember... That's the 5v5. Do you remember in the teaser for day number two, Noel said, we'll see who gets too old. I think I know who got too old. He called it. Noel called it. What a performance from Furry Room. Uh, and they are loud as well. I want to highlight we're standing here either meters or inches away. And the entire time that game is happening, the entire time team fights are happening, huge, uh, huge excitement and energy. Team fight calls audible all across this giant uh, stadium here. Burry Room dominating in that match. And on the opposite side, KDF being remarkably put out. Absolutely. And it's something to look forward to as KDF will 
continue to play out the next matches and BRU getting closer to into the group stage as well. We're going to toss it back over to Degon and the rest, as I'm sure they are devastated over their prediction losses. Thank you very much, Granted, That was exactly where I was going first. Mr. Perfect, not so much anymore, Omo. All three of us getting that one wrong as the big upset coming on through. It is Burium United taking down Kwangdong Freaks, and they did it in class. They did it their own way. They did it the same way, too, after falling behind in the early game but then coming back with these picks that we wanted to dive on into, these adjustments that led to uh, very clear win conditions for them. Yeah, and I think BRU's usage of red light counter pick has just been tremendous in this series. In game one, they fifth picked the Renekton Mew. Say, he counter picked himself. He got solo killed twice. What's the purpose of this pick? And the moment you get the team fighting, the moment Renekton just locks down these slippery champs, you see exactly why. Same time, this same thing this time around. The Darius pickup and the Singe pickup as well. So effective into the triple melee comp. And it's all about the, the team fights as well by Burium. You know, they're yeah. playing towards these team fights. They're picking these champions towards the team fights. You know, the Sona as well in the bot lane. You know, the scaling champions, the Corky as well. These are scaling champions that, you know, Burium have that play style, that's the slow play style they want to go into. Right, and it started with them picking fights early into a team that had Yumi that was dishing out damage, Lucian that was dishing out damage, Lee Sin that wants to jump and start these fights early. So at first we we're like, hey, what's going on? But finally around this Drake pit, we get to see the engage that Burium United wanted to have, and maybe a little bit of disrespect for the engage range here of Burium United by Kwang Dong Freaks. Yeah, the, the Renekton in the previous game, they didn't respect that. This game, it was the Singed as well that they didn't respect. They weren't able to just back off, and it was split again. It was kind of the same as the first game by uh, Kwang Dong Freaks. They were split up, and it allowed um, Burium to be able to engage forward with Singed, with the um, with the Darius as well, and the Renekton from the first game that allowed them to get this victory. Yeah, and this one here with the Lucian stepping up by Acrobat, he sees one unit, he's like, all right, I'm going on in. Surprise, the rest of the team's <laughs> there. That's been the whole game plan here yeah. for Burium United. Bia, you have just been doing such a good job in making picks and team fighting. I want to quote Thomas James, who said that among the weeks, the best team fighting Korean team well, they just got completely destroyed in 5v5s by BRU. Yeah, and to, to me, it really felt like a lack of understanding of how these fights were going to play out. Yes, you want to go ahead and skirmish with Lucian, but yes. it kept going into these big 5v5 fights, and that's not what you wanted here. You wanted to kind of pick apart, get your pick early, get a burst down by someone. Instead, it's Burium United going on through with the victory in their first match here at Icon. So you can see how much it means. <laughs> <laughs> the whole staff Love to it. the whole team and uh, I would say the whole region again we know that we had the fans over in Thailand that loved it as well as we take a look at the damage chart here this one done much faster wow. no need for a barren chance or a barren steal by what the Jess but still very effective cold and feet yeah cold and feet I mean the most damage in the entire game you wouldn't really expect on as it Shane as in Joe you would have expected it I mean even the Yubi damage as well got another <laughs> four AP game you would expect it these you know dragon laners like the corky lucian it's one funny funny thing about this game as well is that we should have started the show about lucian corky mid lane this time around we got to see the lucian corky bot lane in a dra uh, dragon lane um going for the more aggressive builds you know with the raises and everything as well um and then with lucian with kraken slayer it seems like Don always wanted to focus on that game team fights and they did do that but they just get ahead enough and yes. everyone was able to scale up enough to be able to get you know the win in the end and the unsung hero here on the damage charts, the lowest damage is also going to be that Sona. But if you looked at how much healing, shielding, speed boosting that Wanted just provided to his team, it was just such a broken pick in the context of this game. And I feel like playing against Wanted Jazz, playing against his full AP, it might have skewed the perceptions of KDF as well. North is known for being a Roma as well, for playing tanks, for playing engage. Even on Yumi duty for two games, because he wants to deny that from Wanted Jazz. Yeah, and, and you can see the power of that and Wanted Jazz showing off the skill set. We're saying, hey, whenever you get down your champ tier list yeah. and you've got to pick your third best, your fourth best, your fifth best, what does it look like? And maybe a little bit concerned when we went with the Sona. I know that Kangus was around in the back. I never had a doubt. I like the Sona here. Never had a doubt. It was about scaling, but they <laughs> often get to those fights early. And yeah. For Kwangdong Freaks, I think you have to wonder what it's like if you're just a little bit more disciplined because they were consistently getting those leads in the early games. They were finding the skirmishes they want. In this game specifically, I think. Four to one at one point, and then they opt into a couple of these weird fights. I think it was the bait on the top side of the map onto the singe, but they went without knowledge of where the rest of the team composition was, and that's when Burium United started 
grouping up together, and they're like, okay, you do want to skirmish a little bit, we'll be here and just beat you with numbers. Yeah, and that's the good thing about BRU's team fighting. That's the good thing about how they play around each other. You saw them lose in lanes, yes, but every time KDF tried to accelerate the laning lead, they tried to go for a dive, you would see Cold and Feet waiting in the wings. You would see What the Jazz waiting to back his teammates up. And BRU do such a good job of covering that weaker laning phase, I would say, at least from what we've seen here today, to really just get into their team fighting strengths. I think the great thing about Burium as well is that it looks like they did their homework. Yeah. You know, against Kondong Freaks, you know that they're going to focus on that top side of the map with Zeki and Mar and like you mentioned, Egon, you know, that little bit for counterplay that they got, though, what the Jess roaming up to the Baron lane, which you don't really expect on a Sona, to be honest with you, <laughs> roamed up to that Baron lane, realized that, okay, this team loves to go towards the Baron lane. They got that exchange, they won the team fight in that top side or that little skirmish to the top side, and when it came to the team fights, they were able to get the picks that they needed. Well, we got to see how impactful what the Jess was with his roams. And now standing by with our Mika for an interview. You are back watching the Wild Rift icons, and I have here with me What the Jazz from Burium United Esports. Congratulations. That was such an amazing win, and we have to talk about that moment in game one, that Baron Clash that you had. Can you walk us through that moment? What were you feeling? Do you see that you were gonna, you, you were gonna get, you're gonna be dead at any moment? Um, that moment, I was really like terrified because I know that if they get this Baron, the game is pretty much over. But um, luckily, I was a Trash, and Trash is one of the like one of the champion that is really tanky against the AD because like you gather the snow and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I could like, go for a play like. Yeah. Amazing call and your instinct. I mean, like basically as one of the best supports in Southeast Asia, of course, was on point there. But you did mention that, of course, you were very, you were scared because Quantum Freaks, you know, they, they are a very, very powerful team. What was the most difficult thing going up against them? Um, the most difficult thing going up against them would definitely be um, they, their play style because their play style is like slow and methodical. Yeah, and like we, uh, Brera, we always like go for the aggressive play, something like that. And yeah, just like, what happened in like game one that we um, didn't like execute well, they, yeah, they're gonna crush us on the team fight. Right, right. And um, so I have this for you. Uh, you're good friends with uh, Omo, right? Yeah. D did you know that he said Kwang was going to win? Really? Yeah. Well, he said that Kwang was going to win. So he bet against you guys. Do you have a message for him by any chance? Uh, um, my message to him will be. Um, I'm running out of my T-shirt. Maybe like um, oh, no. I lend it to like someone I, named I, like Leo I, or I something. Said, I, I said uh, I said Barrier was gonna win. Just just in case you have a, an oh, extra. Uh, yeah, I said you, I, you, you yeah, yeah, yeah yeah yeah. I said that Barrier was gonna win. Yeah okay. I'll, case, I gave it to you. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. What the jazz? It is so good seeing you guys and congratulations to Barrier. United Esports. I am so curious to see uh, what Omo has to say to that when Wild Rift Icons returns.